All right, well, where we last left off, you guys had that ferocious battle with the Ettercaps, and thanks to Bandek, roll of 18 was able to spot the extremely hard-to-find entranceway that leads into the Ettercap treasure hoard that was rumored throughout. And you found it, and it gave you a massive amount of treasure, loot, and XP. And with that, also, with Bandek losing his ability to heal with a critical one um, and also from previous adventures having Kilvar had lost his light both dwarves feel they're in need of some penance <laughs> some some uh, some prayer and dedication but also being out of healing spells completely you realize well we had a quick group decision and decided it, it's best to travel back you're going to risk traveling back on the road to go back get new supplies and, uh, you know, take a quick little bit of relaxation. Hopefully get rested up enough that it'll uh, be the wiser play. But we shall see. All right. So we're going to pick it up. I believe I just le we left we left off when you guys uh, just exited. Yeah. yeah, we had just left. So we were just getting ready to actually travel back. So since you guys have traveled this already... Uh, if you recall, when you were leaving the city of Eldretch, for the first nine hours, it was a like a DC-9 uh, check to not get lost, and then the second day of travel was a DC-12. But now that you're used to it, I'm lowering each one by a tier. So the first day of travel uh, will be down to a DC-9, and the second half, if you can make it that far, uh, will be no check required to get lost because you're more familiar, right? You travel the path, so coming back is going to be a little bit easier. Uh, but that being said, uh, as you now make your way out uh, into the moonlit path leading the Citadel, we'll have our Ranger roll intellect for navigation with advantage with only a DC 9. Okay. All right. Net, Net 20, baby. 20. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, beautiful. So, <clears throat> can we do with a nat 20? Well, it was only going to be one roll for the entire day, uh, so you nailed it. What I will say, with a nat 20, I'll say that on the route back, you know of a shortcut to shave off three hours of travel, which is one full random encounter check. Wait. <clears throat> That's really good because we can use it on the way back too. Yes, you could definitely use it on the way back. You'll remember it. So just remind me on the way back uh, that you know of a shortcut here. So, all right, first three hours of travel on a roll of a one. There is a random encounter. No. And then I'll say I'm out of arrows, so I need you guys. But this is the shortcut I was going to use to uh, ditch you, but I needed to escape. <laughs> Oh, you knew about it all along, eh? Just keeping it <laughs> yeah. secret. <laughs> keeping it secret. Um, we always got an exit. I love that. So now you hit the shortcut, and you shave off three hours of travel, so I'm not even going to roll. And then for the last three hours of day one, I will now roll... Nothing. All right. So you managed to travel for an entire day, uneventful, through a dark forest. Um, on this road, you... Do not pass any travelers or anything, because um, in this part of the woods, it's harder to navigate and more treacherous than normal. Um, ooh, I, oh, you're lucky. I forgot. Uh, if you remember last time I rolled for weather, and so the weather here was actually, it was pretty, uh, pretty brutal, but you know what? It didn't come into factor here. So, a correction, now that I remembered it was sunny, uh, yeah, you, it was... One of the rare times the sun was out, but uh, it was warm, which meant, uh, you know, throughout the day you would have, I'm not going to do it now, but you would have had to have been making uh, constitution checks to uh, not have disadvantage on things from like heat and exhaustion, just tre tre treading through uh, hot weather. But I'm going to say, you know, you managed to travel with the uh, with the shortcut, you get your day, your full travel in days of travel, and um, yeah, you're sweating horribly, but you need to make camp for the night. <clears throat> so, 
Um, that being said, do you want to uh, roll for what type of camp you can set up here? Or you just want to just uh, plop everything down on the side of the road? I think we all find a nice secure spot to rest. <laughs> so, I mean, like, I guess we can do the same thing we did at the keep, like where uh, someone tries to sort of set up a nice safe area uh, while another person looks for, like, proper firewood. All right, Ranger. Roll with advantage. All right. Intellect again. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. It's nice. <laughs> okay. So, with that... You find, um, you know, an excellent, nice shaded area of the forest that you figure should be pretty good. A couple nice boulders to keep uh, the temp off of you. <clears throat> it's going to be a warm night, so none of you guys have to worry about cold. And um, who has s soft things to sleep on? I know we did last time. Who has bed rolls or sleeping bags? We all have them, but only me and Mike have sleeping bags, I believe. Yeah, like, we've got a tent to protect us from the elements, but I've got nothing. Like, oh, I'm just sleeping on ground. Right, you were sleeping on ground, and Ranger, I don't think you had a bedroll or a sleeping bag either, did you? Oh, I don't have one, but I, I take first watch, and I will take the bedroll. <laughs> take second watch. Yeah, because yeah. I know last time I had to make some more checks than Luther. I can't remember. There was something I had that was a little bit worse, but I ended up passing the checks. Yeah. Um, now, if if you'd like, you can, uh, who, you, uh, Rothgar, if you want to try to make uh, basically a bed out of, like, tree branches or try to make something, you can with a survival check. <laughs> I would like to do that because that makes sense. I feel that's something Rothar would have done before he sort of went out in town. So, uh, yeah, basically just chopping see. down a bunch of branches that still got some ferns and different things on them. So, and... is that intelligence or yes. wisdom for that? It's intelligence. intelligence? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no modifiers okay. with this? No advantage, disadvantage, or anything? Nope. Just a straight roll, and you got to hit the DC. I've got a minus one. So, let's <laughs> see what I get. <laughs> What was your um, background? Your my, background my background is Ranger. Oh, well, then you would have gotten advantage. I I'll roll again. I, I got a good one anyway, but let's see if I hit that next. Yeah, one. you got good enough. Because I think I, I, think I, cause I think I got advantage last time because of the background. It doesn't come up very often. Yeah. No. I, I, just, I think that wasn't my first roll. Because I just remember that you have a Ranger, which works well because since you were like were a warrior that traveled on the land a lot. So. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't come up in terms of skills, but in terms of like this, you yep, know, it's okay. you, you're able to put down enough shrubbery that you soften the ground. So, everyone will have somewhere to sleep because Ranger will be. Uh, taking one of the bedrolls when the dwarves get up. <laughs> um, okay. <clears throat> we go to sleep here, and because of the great camp, uh, you said, so would you roll for your, your first check to make camp was a 17, right? Um, so the 18, want to give none. With the 15, I'll give one. So for this night, I'm going to say there's only going to be one random encounter check because of the excellent camp location that the ranger found. We would uh, take a ration off too, right? <clears throat> yeah, you can mark off a ration. Oh, yeah. There right. is no random encounter. And I'm flipping a coin and a one is bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a hint of disappointment in your voice there, Eddie. Is that Always. Just me? Always. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Well... Good work, team. Good work. I'm rolling something else here. I really want something to happen to you. So one through six, any number makes a random encounter. Go. No, no. I have charts <laughs> for all kinds of things. So um, On the way back. Wait until we have our clerics have their healing. <laughs> so um, based on the good camp, you all get a good night's sleep. And you wake up the next morning. You're able to eat your rations. The weather, which is what I just rolled for. It's a very clear night. So there's no clouds at all. The moon is well lit and bright. Um, I might as well unpause the game because ah, the light spell is going to go away <laughs> on Bandek anyways. Um, <clears throat> but that being said, now you will travel. You have nine more hours of travel. Let's see. 
if we can get back to town without getting butchered by something. First three hours go by, good. Next three hours, good. Last three hour stretch to make it to the city. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, when we had our rest, we're, uh, we got all our health and that Ooh, back, right. right? Yeah, sorry, getting ahead of myself. Yes. No, 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 that's fine. This is important just in case like we get into something. So, so okay, I just yeah. Myself. And you yeah. all had a good night's nice rest. So uh, that thanks to the ferns and the bed rolls and everything. And the temperature was a nice warm night. So everybody can get all of your HP back. And you also get all of your spells back, except for the ones that you need, you to, re you need to repent for. <clears throat> So dwarves, you got everything back. Uh, so basically, Kilvar don't have the light, and Bandek don't have the heels. How? Just out of curiosity, how's the banter been between our dwarves? I know, like normally when we're on the road, there's a lot of banter, but are they like noticeably quieter than normal towards each other? <laughs> Kilvar, um, Kilvar's going through some shit. He's uh, uh yeah, Bandek. Bandek is spending this whole time in like. Silent prayer. Okay. <laughs> Much quieter trip going home than it was leaving. Yeah, Hilbert will be shooting looks at every member of this party, especially the ranger and the warrior, as if he's trying to grow insight, but I'm not even going to bother. That's more of a question I plan on asking them in the future. He's trying to analyze them you're judging them with your judgy eyes <laughs> for yes, two days yes. judging <laughs> you being he's looking for like religious symbols all that stuff on their armor you know <laughs> okay yeah. um all right so as you're traveling through the trees here now the path gets more narrow to the point where you got a canopy overhead thick bushes on the side the path gets a bit more narrow and with the ranger leading the way um and the route being a bit familiar, you know the path, but the vegetation gets a little bit more dense. Uh, but there is a little bit of a beaten path that, you know, other people have traveled, and you're following that tightly. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm wondering how I want to do perception tests. Uh, I feel like if I let everyone roll, somebody's going to get it, but that's typically the way it would be. I'll let everyone, it's going to be very hard to pull off. But everyone, if you can give me a wisdom check to try to spot something. I don't, that's what's um, wrong. I don't have my team. I, I, I had to pop my window. In. I was like, I was trying to find my character sheet. I was like, I always have it somewhere, but I can't find it. <laughs> I'm, I, I want to pass on this, Eddie. <gasps> oh! Because of the fact I did just state my whole trip is analyzing Luther and uh Yeah, no problem. Okay. <laughs> and he's all like, this is gonna be very hard to notice. And then we get like an eighteen and then like a twenty-two. <laughs> so basically I'm not going to give this thing advantage now. Um but I do have to roll to see who. And one is Bandek. Um I'm just gonna go clockwise from Bandek. So one is Bandek, two Kilvar, three Rothgar, four Luther. I bet it's gonna be Kilvar. Kilvar normally is the target of these things. Oh, it's Luther! Oh, oh no! Disengage. <laughs> um Ah, disengage. Uh yeah, I'll let you try it. It takes a test for you to try it, right? Yeah. Dex DC twelve. Okay. And then Wait, I'll, you got that thing that you can jump back, yeah. It's a disengage, I think. We're just reading it to make sure there's nothing else. Uh, so he, he came, like, whatever it is that's going to fight us came next to us? Is that Yes, exactly. It's coming right at you, so yeah. All right. In that case, DC 12. Dex it's basically DC. moving adjacent or on top of you, which is the same kind of thing. It's not attacking oh. you yet, but once it gets its, to its attack action. But it's take, basically taking its move action to get in position. Ah, uh, it didn't work. Oh, no. It didn't work. Okay. And you don't have luck or whatever. Okay. So. Wait. No, I do. Ah, because we had the long rest. No, you don't, get, you, don't get luck. you don't get luck. Oh, okay. What were you saying? I, I have advantage on the dex check. <gasps> oh, right. If you want to, yeah. Because of my medallion. That's right. A crazy cool medallion. We also all have luck from... Uh, Whatever we did last game. Did we get luck from that? Oh, okay. I do have luck, yeah. I'm just going to roll again. Still no. Okay. Okay. All right. So, 
Oh, why is, why it... is it always Dex? I fucking hate. Dex. I know. I can't believe none of us have any like positive modifiers for Dex. Why is the damn token all messed up? Do you see a okay. white border? Do you see a I'm white border? Yeah, through. I see the white around it. Yeah, but it's okay. No big deal. Putting it through, one person will remember this. We're fucked. <laughs> Um, yeah, if the, if the only thing to get away from this is Dex, then like that's it. Just kill us now. <laughs> no, I'm having GURP flashbacks now. Huh? Oh right. no, yeah. So you can highlight over it to see what it is. So as you're walking through in a thick canopy overhead, and you're like ducking under trees and things like that, a massive snake, like the size of an anaconda or or you know or larger, drops down from the tree above. And you're able to, like, instinctively, uh, Bandek and both Rothgar, you're able to spot it enough to just say, you know, like, look out! That's, like, all the reaction time you got, basically to not give it advantage, right? Mm -hmm. To get a surprise round on you as such. But it's dropping down on top of Luther. Uh, and so when it falls down, all the weight of it drops on it, and it is attacking. If you guys spotted it, would mean that it doesn't get a surprise round, so I should probably roll initiative, hey? I would roll initiative because you said it doesn't get like, you yeah, know. You're right. Yeah. That's what I was just thinking. So let me. We got a nat 20 with one of our perceptions, yeah, exactly. so it did not take us off guard. Okay. <clears throat> but it's essentially <laughs> in the same space as. Uh, it could basically be in the same space as all of you, technically. Uh, it's dropping down on all of you as such. Um, okay, let me roll. Let me roll for everybody. Roll all. What order we got? <clears throat> There's a shocker. <laughs> the snake first? first? <laughs> really? You guys. Wow, that never happens. That, yeah, you never get the first in initiative. <laughs> I mean, you must I've be so happy. That. Like, this is such a rarity. Screw you guys. Screw you guys. <laughs> We speak uh, truth. That's all. To Just be, truth. To be fair, though, <laughs> look at your guys' initiative scores. Minus one, minus one, plus zero, plus zero. This thing has a plus two. So it didn't actually... It, it didn't... Even the snake, we all rolled. Like, shit. The highest <laughs> of the plus two was seven. So, and it rolled a five, plus two. Yeah, that's some shitty-ass rolls. Either way, it drops down with its initial target being the ranger. And you tried... I let you try to get it. You already tried to get out of the way. You couldn't when it moved in. So now we start at top of the round. We will go. You don't need light sources. There's no light sources technically up now, but you don't need it. It's a well-lit night. Yeah. Um, so Was it night? I thought it was day. It's always night. Uh, this, oh, yeah. this is the next day. Remember, you guys took a long rest. So that yeah. is, um, And there's only little brief windows of sunlight. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Here comes the first attack against the ranger. It misses with a 12. You have 13 AC. Holy shit. And it's going for its second one. Oh. And I'm down. Oh. Zero. <laughs> That's like all oh. your health. That's my entire hit point. Yeah, yeah, yeah you rolled max damage. <laughs> and okay, oh. so you can see this big thing. It comes, it basically drops down on top of all of you. And uh, for now, I'm just going to move it pretty much to here in the Scrabble. And it crushes Luther to the ground. And with that, it uh, now that it hit, it also has got him like wrapped up in the meantime. It's wrapped around him partially with the bottom part of, uh, I guess, its tail or its body. I guess it doesn't have a tail. But um, and then the head of it now like whips up and then looks at the rest of you. And with that, Bandek, you are up, staring at this giant snake in front of you. Uh, I am going to take a swing at it with my longsword. Ooh, nice. Whammo. Okay, big solid three damage into this thing. As you slice and some s snake scales and a bit of dark blood just splats across along the ground. You've drawn second blood. 
<laughs> Technically first blood because Luther just got crushed horribly under the weight of this thing. Uh, Rothgar, you're up. Okay. I am going to take a swing at it with my axe. Uh, just doing it one-handed where I got my shield. Uh... Oh, I've been rolling so bad. And look at the damage that I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nope. I've been rolling so bad to hit. Okay. And <clears throat> all right. And so we'll move on to Luther. This is only the first round, so you just got to roll a d4. This uh, plus or minus your con to see how many rounds you can stay alive. Sure. D4 minus two. This is oh. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be minus. Oh, it is minus. Yes, it's either plus or minus, whatever your count is. So you have uh, so one, 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 round. one round to get him up before he dies. Kilvar, you are up. So my first question is, I can reach him even though he's wrapped up, I assume? Yeah, yeah. He's like, and it's only loosely wrapping him. It looks like it's getting ready to go after you guys and probably wrap you up. But uh, yeah, you can definitely see parts of his body to reach out and touch him. Oh, Whew. All right. Oh, he, nice. him, he kind of hesitates for a moment, mutters something under his breath, and then heals. Oh, okay. You, <laughs> Luther, everything just went black, and it's still kind of black, but at least now you know your eyes are open, and you're in a crazy amount of pain, and there's something massive just on top of you. <laughs> and you know what it is. It's a big ass snake that's slithering around and and uh, has you like essentially constricted at the moment. But life has returned to you. <laughs> now it goes to it. <clears throat> okay. Um. Mm hmm. Oh, I apologize. Once it constricted you. Oh no, constrict is a separate attack. Oh. Okay. All right, I'm going to say, since I read this ability wrong, it lets loose its grip. It just had, like, a loose grip on Luther, And uh, so it's going to do all of its attacks this round because technically it's a separate attack roll needed for the Constrict. I thought it was linked with his melee attack, but it's not. So uh, it felt you go limp, <laughs> Luther, and it just released you, but then suddenly you got life brought back to you. We'll just say that happened. All right, so since this thing is here... I think it's going to attack one of these three in front of it. So, uh, D3. One, two, three. That's Rothgar. All Come right. for me. And I'm going to roll a D3 first to see which of its attacks is going to be. It's going to be a bite against you. Ooh, a that's 16 a, hit. That's a hit. One, two, three, four. It's, I got plenty of HP. <laughs> it's, uh... It should probably do this attack next. It should probably open with this attack, technically, which I'm going to do now. So it's going to constrict who? I'm going to roll D3 to see who it's going to try to constrict. Kilver. Um, all right, so it's a contested strength roll. So you roll strength, oh, I roll strength, and... Oh, <laughs> oh no! Guys, I had a good feeling about this. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> You're like bent over trying to heal Luther, and then like the bottom part of the snake comes up, and you just like don't even see it coming, and it just completely wraps you. And before you know it, you're like full on both legs, both arms tucked in tight. So you are now considered immobile. Yeah, Kilver screams it. I knew it. <laughs> um, yeah. So normally you would just be immobile and not be able to move away, but with the critical fail, I'm going to say your arms are are trapped in as well, like you're just fully constricted, you know, because of the net one that you rolled. Uh, all right, and now it's going for a second bite attack on who? Wait, this is third attack? Yep. That's so why I said I did it wrong the first round. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Uh, so that's uh, me. That's, that's you. Me. All right. So, you know, it gets two bite attacks and one constrict attack. Jeez. Yeah. All right. So here's, uh, I thought it was linked, but it's not. <laughs> okay. One, two, three, four. 
as this thing now, it wraps up Kilvar in a death grip, and at the same time, it just lashes out with two big bites and takes two chunks out of Rothgar. Bendek, you're up. Seeing all of this happen, I am going to... Can I use my action to try to break Kilvar out? Uh, yeah, you just gotta contest your strength against its. Let's try that. Okay. Can you beat this? <laughs> this thing is strong. Stop rolling well. Oh, the oh. dice are not on our side tonight. So you grab a part of it, I'm assuming, and you're just yanking on it as hard as you can to get, get some, release some tension off of Kilvar. No luck. This thing got a death grip on your dwarven ally. Rothgar, you're up. Okay, I'm going to try and free the dwarf. I'm going to just try to attack, like, uh, near Kilvar, just to try and cut off a piece of the snake then, so he can wedge himself free. So this is an attack, one-handed. Come on, dice. Don't screw me over. Twelve hit? Its AC is twelve. Ooh, it's a hit! An eight damage! Cool, big hit. Okay. Big hit, One, almost two, max. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whew. So Big. like slice off a chunk, hopefully make it a bit easier for Kilvar to get loose. No, no, not at all. <laughs> it's not even, yeah, no. <laughs> right, Luther, you're up. You're prone underneath the snake, but it well, does not have you grappled. <clears throat> uh, can I stab it well prone or do I have to stand up and stab no, it? No, you can lie on your back and be fighting it. Um, Normally, you'd probably have, like, disadvantage attacking prone, but I won't give it to you since this thing is literally on top of you and swarming around, so... If you I'm want just to do trying it, to hit it with a dagger, not, like, a sword or anything, because yep. that's all I got. Just straight roll will be fine. Straight roll. Let's do it. He's using a dagger, folks. Ah, uh, Levin, you're uh, one off. One off. Can um, I, um... There's no, like, disengage rule here, right? No, you can just... Um, you can, um... Use half your movement to get up, and then basically move like 15 feet away. I just don't want to be under it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Um, and there's no attacks of opportunity either, unless the creature has it built in or something. But Yeah, okay. all right. You just barely missed this thing. And uh, as it's la lashing around, Kilvar, you were up. Um, con con uh, contesting strength to break out, I assume? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna give this a whirl. Ooh, it's twelve. <laughs> <laughs> you almost got it. You almost got it, but not quite. Now this, I'm reading over. This is not worded in a way that says you're, you're, you get this. You're like grappled all the time. It just constricts contested strength to hold target immobile for one round. So that sounds like it lets it go, and ha we'll need to make the constrict attack again. Um, That's what it sounds so, like, based off if it's how you read it. Yeah. So yeah, it, 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 he probably gets the option to keep it, but if he does, we have to make a reroll. Yeah. You know so I mean? I'm gonna let it. Do, yeah. I'm gonna let do the constrict attack against you again, since he already. This would make sense that he would keep you. Yeah, since he's already got it, it doesn't make sense for not let one person go to constrict someone else. So a strength check as he's continually trying to keep you in check. What a thing, strong. You're a st so. My, my question is: If he attacks me now as a constricted target, there, is there? Does he have advantage on it? Is there a purpose to it? You know um. I mean? Yeah. So with this, where I'm just thinking, it's meant to be a mobile. Like it literally just says a mobile. You just can't escape. You can't escape it and run away from it. Um. So and it would just normally bite you to death with its multiple bite attacks, right? But um. Yeah. So this is not, I'm going to say to this one, it's not like a crushing snake. Like it's not meant to try to crush you and do damage like the anacondas and stuff. This one literally is just constrictability. It's just trying to tie you up while it tries to devour you, right? Um, so it's not actually, so yeah, it's I just not, didn't know if it would make an easier part to hit, right? Yeah, no, I'm not giving it any modifiers for okay. just being a mobile. If it said something, uh, if it was a different like negative term there, like, I don't know, restrained, then I would give it. But uh, a mobile just means you can't freaking move. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I will say, though, your arms are free and stuff. Uh, you're in that kind of thing. You just can't move, okay? 
So as you're struggling to get free, you're still immobile, but since we're a couple checks past the nat, nat, nat one that you rolled, uh, you're no, you got your, your arms are at least free. All right, <clears throat> four targets in front of it. Let's see who it's start bite into. Kilvar. A 15 is your AC, so that is a hit for a whopping one damage. And then its next attack will go against Rothgar, everyone's favorite warrior. Oh, it was almost a nat 20. <laughs> That's a miss. Rothgar, you parry it away. You block the bite as it lunges in, sending its head over towards Luther as it stares Luther in the eye. Uh, but Bandek, you're up. I am going to try and break Kilgar out again. Okay. There it comes. Strength time. Man, this thing is rolling away on strength. I'm going to use my luck to do it again. What? Okay. Brother in Christ. You can't roll the fives. <laughs> Literally the same <laughs> result. <laughs> All right, I can just see now as this snake is lashing around and it's keeping Kilvar immobile. Bandek, you kind of hold on to it and you're like flipping around with it too as you're like trying to break it free. And uh, He's got two dwarves for the price of one right now. Exactly, two dwarves riding on the end of it. Uh, Rothgar, you're up. Okay, swing with the axe. <clears throat> A one-handed, uh, let's go... Nope. No dice. The dice are not our friends tonight. <laughs> this time you uh, swing, and as it's bucking and trying to fight off Bandek, uh, you swing, and the thing just, just goes over its head, and you miss. Luther! Oh, and, and just one other thing. Uh, this isn't going to interrupt anything. As a free action, I'm going to use my fighting spirit just to heal, so you can go ahead with the turn, but I'm just going to roll and see how much I heal. Okay, go for it. Luther! I want to see how much he heals. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. I'll, uh, I'm gonna try to take a swing at it. I mean, we're in this now, and I kind of owe that dwarf who brought me back. So, try to kill this thing. Whew. <clears throat> okay. One, two, three. You thrust forward and it sinks right up to the hilt. You pull it out and a bunch of blood spurts out on your hand. But, you but I am going to do a, like a one, <laughs> and you, two, three. <laughs> you don't, you don't want to be so, the target anymore. So it doesn't take it out, and it just remains stuck in, but he didn't technically give permission for it to take it. There's a count as the snake tried to take the dagger. <laughs> no. but, I was uh, waiting to see if one of you guys took it off my dead body. I'm not going out by myself. <laughs> we don't know okay. what it does, so yeah. And no, we're not on a battle grid, but are you essentially just ten feet, staying ten feet away from Kilvar, or ten feet away from uh, the snake? Uh, yeah. So there. I'm gonna let you know. Spare, which is I'm gonna let you know based on the length of this thing. Uh, you were already adjacent to it. There's nowhere you can move that you will be able to get out of its constrict range if it chooses to constrict you. Yeah, I'm it, hoping as an animal, it's going to go to the things before it versus it can, me. Yeah, it can essentially stretch all the way or probably over here somewhere if it wanted to. Um, but not what its bites, just what its constrict, right? Um, based on the size of it, and it's all coiled up here. Killfire, you're up. <clears throat> now your arms are free, but uh, you, unless you were walking with your weapon out, I don't know. Well, you could, yeah, you could draw an attack if you want. I'll let you say what you want to do. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll, I'll attack. All right. Ooh, Ooh. That is, whoa, that's a lot whoa. of damage. That's max damage. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's exactly enough. All right. How do you want to do this, Kilvar? Uh, Kilvar is going to get, he gets really frustrated as this snake is like whistling, like whipping around, looking at the people biting him. And as it whips back towards him, 
He drives his sword up, not through his mouth, but like right under his jaw as it he's kind of short, so as it reaches over towards like Rothgar, it is up high, and he shorts it right up through the like under his jaw through the top of his head. Alright. And with that it goes limp and the constrict around you falls loose. Uh as you're holding the blade. Bandek probably falls on his butt after trying to like <laughs> wrestle with this thing and then the thing suddenly goes limp. Or maybe you do a heroic roll. That's up to you, Ben. <laughs> nope, fall flat on my face. The most wars would just probably fall flat. <laughs> That's why I said it. And, uh, all right. And there we go. You have did it. This was a level five creature. Um, let's see. On a, if I flip a coin, on a one, it had treasure. <laughs> Somehow. Oh, oh. <laughs> Um, last oh, thing you fangs. <laughs> it's it looks like this thing had a nearby nest. Uh, this is like its area, it's pretty much hunting grounds where it hunts travelers. And uh, just slightly down the road away, you do notice the just off the little bit off the beaten path, you do notice the long dead remains of someone. Some wary merchant traveler, and uh, you know he has a backpack there. Every all of his rations and traveling gear has long been destroyed, but the one thing you do ration out of his backpack is, is a rolled-up ta tapestry worth forty-five gold coins. Uh, who would like to take the tapestry? Tapestry. Uh who has I have room for it you can just attach it to my back okay all right I'm opening your up here now and I'm dragging over a tapestry that means you've successfully survived the trip to get back to the city Kilvar will ask uh, first Rothgar and and, uh, and Luther what god they follow Especially, he asks uh, Luther first. Not long after the fight. Say, I don't particularly follow any of them in a in a worship sense. I, I agree; they they all exist, and they all do their part for different people. Have you considered following Madeira? I have considered how helpful Madeira has been in our quest so far. Okay, I'll leave it at that. He's definitely curious. And on the way, he'll ask Rothgar as well. Yeah, and uh, Rothgar will just say, uh, well, I'm not like particularly devout like yourself and Bandek, but I do follow, uh, or at least my people follow, Geed, uh, the god of the wilds. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, he'll give you a silent walk. <laughs> no doubt. Rothgar. Lost cause. Her heretic god. <laughs> the pagan, yes. Uh, Alright. <clears throat> so, you make it back to the city of Eldratch. You are exhausted. Bones are hurting. Uh... Mostly uh, Kilvar and Luther. Um, despite your hit points being high, you're still in some pain that would be from being crushed by an anaconda. Uh, but other than that, you're just glad to be back. And time you get back, um, you would definitely need a rest. Oh, I forgot to give you guys uh, luck tokens for defeating that thing. <clears throat> So. Who's up for some wizards with thieves? No, no, we're not doing none of that. <laughs> I'm, joking, right. I'm joking. So level. T All right. So le you're level two heroes, and you fought a level five monster. Um, number of monsters was one, so you get uh, two luck. So who doesn't have luck in the party? I used it in that fight, but Bendik uh, used his. Okay, anybody else need luck? I do not. I need. 
All right, so well, if there's only go. two of you, then you both get your luck back. <clears throat> All right, so check off your lucks. Okay, so by the time you get back into the city, you're basically just going to have enough time to go to the guild, uh, offload what you don't want to be carrying, and get a good bath and a night's sleep. Um, that's pretty much what you're going to do after a, quite like that kind of day. So you guys can calculate now. I believe on your character sheets there's a way to put it a thing in storage or something. Uh, what was that yes. again? Uh, is it? What do we do? It's a stash. It's a, like, it's oh, a stash. It's a stash. Thing. stash. Nice. So on your inventories, anything that you're planning to stash here and not haul all the way back to the dungeon with you, uh, just stash it for now. And then when you get back, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, we can sort out when you're allowed to divvy up the loot. <clears throat> now, I'm also holding on to one of the main quest items. Would we just stash that? You probably would, rather than bring it back. Yeah, I'd stash any. Yeah, so I'd stash it. There's no reason to take that back with us. Yeah, right. not unless there's we, something uh, we to use. Visit like the merchant to uh, restock all of our. <clears throat> yeah, oh, I'm gonna uh, get Eddie? into that the next day. Yep, I'm just doing the, this night. Yes, I, I have to add something. You're gonna have to reroll what loot we got. That tapestry, I already had it. <gasps> oh no, really? no, no! It's because you found that tapestry in with the splitting ichor ooze. You found a different tapestry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Two so, tapestries? Yep, there's two. <laughs> What's the other tapestry? Oh, wait. You know, you're right. You're right. Because um, I rolled a random loot there and you got the tapestry, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All so right. What's the, so what did we actually find? Okay. <laughs> Retcon. Um, I, I was I was looking at my treasure because I was going to go put stuff in the thing. I was like, I have that tapestry. Now, I'm checking these tapestry off. Tapestry so deleted. I so I don't screw this up anymore. Um... Yeah, well, you should put like a little uh, mark or something there. Yeah, I'm marking it now. All right, the next thing on here, which I believe you guys already probably found too, was a pearl. Uh, I'm gonna Pearls, I guess. I'm going sk to skip the we pearl. We did find a pearl um, uh, last time. A I golden anchor necklace. Has anyone found a, a necklace that uh, is a golden anchor? I no, I've got a necklace of thick gold links, but not a golden anchor necklace. Okay, so... Um, who, um, if you could delete that, uh, Luther, that tapestry. Already done. All yeah. right. So, the item is. This, you... How much is this worth? Only 10 gold. Oh. <clears throat> but at least it's an item you're getting out of the way and getting closer to some of the fat loots, you know? Some of the better stuff you can find. All right. <clears throat> so, if you look in the chat box, you will see. The very cool looking golden anchor necklace. It has no magical properties, but it is worth it. It looks like it should have magical properties. It is pretty cool looking, right? Uh, yeah. But uh, no. Uh, it's a common thing that is sold to uh, sailors and, you know, captains of ships and stuff like that. Um, but that is so you can stash that as well for now if you want, Luther. <clears throat> so. Uh. We'll get into the other, so that's, all I'm saying is this night that you first got back, all you had time to do was stash what you don't want, probably get a bath, and uh, get some sleep, right? Um, the next day, you wake up, and here's where, here's the thing that we're going to do. So, normally, you know, in this I've been kind of speeding up and narrating what happens in town, which I'm going to do again this time, but I think in the future missions... I'm going to flesh out this town more and let you guys roleplay it like a normal, like we normally do in a game, and try to bring the town more to life, uh, mm. just so you know, and get more of uh, that on the go, so you can get used to the different NPCs around the city and bring the city to life. Dwarves, dwarves, dwarves. You wake up, and you know, you're all refreshed, and you know you got this heaviness on you that, you know, you messed up. <clears throat> You know, your god is a little bit frowning on you for some reason. You're not sure why. But, um, you know, proud of you, but also at the same time, you feel like you need to at least get some prayer on the go, right? You know, <laughs> to try to gain access to some of your abilities that you have lost. So, we'll start with Bandek. <clears throat> in the future, by the way, I'm probably going to ask you guys how you want to handle these. Um, but I assume you're going to probably uh, 
prey on it, right? Yeah. Bandic? Like most would. All right. So, Acolyte Bandek. <clears throat> A devout follower of the righteous deity, St. Teragnus, you find yourself in prayer as you sought atonement. His god tasked you with a solemn duty. With his sturdy frame and unwavering resolve, Bandek will spend the entirety of the day tending to the sick and wounded that enters his temple. From the humblest miner to the proudest warrior, none of them were turned away from his care. With each bandage bound, and each comforting word spoken, Bandek sought to mend not only flesh, but also the fractured faith of his kin. Through his selfless actions, the echoes of St. Teragnus's teachings reverberate through the stone halls, who witness his deeds of the enduring power of righteousness and compassion. So, you had to spend an entire day essentially doing that to the community. And now Kilver, <clears throat> I assume you would pray on it. <laughs> yep. And when are you not praying <laughs> or talking to your God? Um, okay. Now for you, in the dimly lit alleys and shadow corners of the city, Acolyte Kilvar, a stout dwarf of unwavering faith in his deity, Madeira the Covenant, embarked on a solemn journey of redemption. Haunted by doubts that nod at the edge of his belief, Kilvar sought to atone for his recent lack of faith by immersing himself in the darkest recesses of the city. Throughout the long hours of the night, he spoke diligently of Madeira's guiding light, preaching of blessings bestowed upon those who embraced her teachings. I'm stressing that too, those who embrace her. <laughs> so. Despite the whispers of doubt that linger in your own mind, uh, from your lack of faith, you know, that you were having. Uh, Kilvar's voice rang out clear and resolute, echoing through the Labyrinthian streets like a beacon of hope amidst the encroaching darkness. Throughout his tireless devotion and unwavering conviction, Kilvar sought not only to reclaim his own faith, but also illuminate the path of righteousness for all who walk in the shadows of doubt and despair. So with that, you get your light spell back. And Bandek, you with your full day of tending to the sick in the temple, uh, <clears throat> you uh, are once again granted your healing ab spells and abilities. The other two of you, um, do, is there any, I have something written. Do you want me to for Roth, both Rothgar and Luther, or did you have anything in mind that you would want to do? Or do you just want me to read what I wrote for you? <laughs> it's up to you. Do it. No, I'm good with what you got. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, this was just my way of speeding up downtime, but in the future I'll let you guys roleplay all this out. So, <clears throat> In the bustling town of Eldratch, the warrior Rothgar and Ranger Luther, their paths intertwined amidst the spiraled chaos of taverns and bustling streets, with tankards of ale in hand and the clatter of dice filling the air, you immersed yourselves in the vibrant tapestry of town's nightlife. Rothgar, his muscles, taught with the memory of past ba battles, uh, Regal, rega, regal, regal. I can never say that word. Regales. Regaled Regale. the patrons with tales of valor and conquest. Your booming laughter reverberated off the wooden rafters. Beside him, Luther, a shadow amongst shadows, observed with keen eyes. His agile fingers um, maneuvering the cards and dice with ease. Together, your laughter and banter. Um, a welcome rep reprise from the uh, rigors of the world beyond the tavern doors. As the night wore on and the ale flowed freely, Rothgar and Luther found solace in each other's company, united by the bond forged in fires of adventure and the enduring spirits of camaraderie. So, if you guys like, I was thinking you guys could flip a coin, and on a one, you're unlucky, and on a two, you're lucky, and then you can either be plus or minus a d20 gold uh, for basically spending a day of trying to unwind and unravel and... Uh, socializing or you can just say you broke even if you don't want to take the chance <laughs> oh i'll always take the chance on a game yeah, let's take a chance so roll a d2 it. and a one is bad and a two is good you want one of us to roll or you no i'll let you guys roll it so t uh two is lucky yes high is good for you one will be bad <clears throat> okay roll. i roll bad all right so rothgar roll a d20 and you lose that much gold 
Watch, I'm going to roll that 20. Oh, okay, only seven. And I'll take Luther, that away. roll a d20, and you gained that much gold. Yeah, Luther doesn't lose. And it's, it'd be hilarious if it's seven. Me too. I didn't Aww. win anything. But. <laughs> Great, so you're. I lose. Luther, you're up one gold. Yeah. And Rothgar, you're down, down seven. seven. <laughs> that could have been a lot worse, but that's okay. Okay, so other than that. <clears throat> Um, what I'm going to do real quick here is I'll hop back to the landing page. Uh, you guys should be able to click on the guild button. And then okay. over here, it should on the left, you should see armory and merchant and those things. No, we can't buy anything from the armory right now. Or, well, I guess the armory. Yeah, we can. That's, that's, oh, I was thinking the exotic. We can't do the exotic thing right now. Um, you can for what's in stock, the two items that were there. So you guys are allowed to browse the armory, the merchant, and the underground market. Uh, so the Calamity Chain Mail is there, and the, oh, sorry, the Calamity Chain, which is that, remember that necklace where you roll a crit on an 18+, plus, but you crit fail on a 1 to 3? <laughs> yeah, that's too big, uh, yeah. And then <laughs> there's the... Then there's the, the, the Wraith Mail. I, I would consider that if you failed on a 1 or 2, would benefit from an 18 to 20. But I mean, like, equal chances, good or bad, is like, uh. And the big Wraith Mail is the uh, mithril item uh, that is once per day you may cause an attack that hits you to miss as if you were intangible. You basically become like a wraith once per day, and the attack just phases through you. Okay. Other than we that, don't have enough for it until we get our items, but we can yeah. take a look. We might get find better armor when we come back. Also, when you do come back, there will be another three items waiting in there for you. Um, in addition nice to those, so just keep that in mind. But otherwise, okay. I know you guys wanted to restock, so uh, merchant and armor. Loser needs a ton of arrows. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm double quivering it up this time. How is our party for torches? I have one torch. Uh, I have one, but I'll restock. But so, uh, do Luther and I have the only two torches? Do Bandek or uh, uh, Kilvar have any? Kilvar doesn't carry torches. <laughs> okay, I'm guessing same uh, for Bandek. Bandek doesn't have any on him anymore. No. Okay. So. Uh, Keep in mind, probably... you may want to buy bed rolls for people who don't have at least bed rolls. Maybe. <laughs> or sleeping bags are even better than a bedroll. If you've got the bag. gold to burn. I have the gold in the inventory space. Uh, definitely need top up rations because I've got like two rations. I got two out of three. So I'll buy one more bit of rations. Uh, so that's. I'll buy a bed. No, a sleeping bag. So I'll do that. Okay, I'll drag one uh, over for you. And oh, my gold did not get through. Uh, okay, and three torches at some point. Three torches. Okay, I was just saying. Um, okay. I can buy so four torches for a party. Do we think that? No, I'll get one more torch. So I'll, I have two torches just in case we don't want to run out of any light. Uh, so I'll buy one more torch. We don't have a trust in the faith. <sighs> Uh, Luther, how many torches you want me to drag over? Three, please. Three, one, <laughs> two. You guys have half your encumbrance slots are like torches. <laughs> yeah. I, only want, I only want one. Oh, you I never you really... put your face in torches instead of gods. <laughs> I mean, if I don't uh, take the torch, then I'll be able to carry more stuff. Do you know what? I'm going to... I will not buy an extra torch. Four for a party might be good as long as our dwarves don't forget their light spell. So, okay, I'm not going to get the extra torch. So I think I'm good with my supplies. Uh, you had the sleeping bag there. Um, uh, dwarves, do you want any gear? Are you buying any or are you I, happy with what you got? I want, I want uh, another ration and a rope and a pole. I have a rope if you want mine. I busted up mine last time, so. I've got a rope, so I mean, you can sort of save your gold, and like, I can just give you mine. Or I can hold on to it if you. I don't mind. I've got inventory space to spare now. So, so do I. All right, did you, so, did you say a pole? Um, a pole, yeah. You yes. want the 10 foot pole? Okay. I do want the 10 foot pole. Like, uh, does, does it fold? 
No, it's a ten foot pole, wooden ten foot long pole. Look at it in the thing. Oh my god. <laughs> That's like a banana for reference, though. You know why that's here, right? Like, that's the traditional I, yeah. D&D dungeon delver thing for, like, yeah. poking for traps. <laughs> Do they need to be ten feet long, though? Yep. Ten foot. And he's only, you're only four foot something. <laughs> so this is like, what I'm oh, saying. Like, where's he putting it? He's putting it in the <laughs> It's a big walking stick. It's a huge walking stick. It's almost three times the size. And so what are you deciding on the rope? Bandic, you buying one or taking, uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm buying it. Okay. Okay, so we'll just have two ropes. Uh, Throw six. me another uh, quiver of arrows as well, 20 arrows. I didn't give you any yet, but you're going to buy another one. Yeah, okay. So that's, there we go. I just dragged it on there. All the arrows. So now you got 40 arrows. Yep. That should be enough, maybe. Kill what it started with last time and I ran out. We did a shit ton, though. And Kilvar, you want anything? Nope. You're good. <laughs> Anything else, folks, before we leave the merchant shop? Uh, no, I think we're good. <clears throat> okay. The, uh, oh, go oh. ahead. The flask or bottle, is that just, like, empty? Yeah. Um, yeah, where's flask to here? I see an oil oh, flask. Oh, flask, yeah. Oh, it's flask just, or bottle, it, I see it there. It's essentially just a bottle. Yeah, it's for, like, if you're going in a dungeon and you're like, what is this strange liquid I want to put in it, or whatever. Like, it's like a travel adventures, part of a adventures kit, right? You know. For example, there was one mission, the first mission, I kept describing the walls had, like, uh, a liquid coming down them, but that was the thing. You could go over and gather up some of that and put it in a jar and come back and get it analyzed, and, you know, things could happen. But... Rothgar cares okay. not for I, those I, things. I, I want one more thing. Okay. That is a bag of caltrops. <laughs> oh, I love caltrops. <laughs> All right. Okay. Somebody's breaking it the caltrops. All right. Um, here you go. It's on your sheet. And the rules for them are there. If you expand it, you can read the rules on it. Um, after you re-geared and you all took a day to relax, um, we will say the night before you're getting ready to head out, I'm not going to allow full-on carousing because you're only supposed to do it in between adventures, not just when you return to town. But I will make a, a small little... I'll do a little bit of leniency here. So I will let you... if You can put in 20 gold in total, so that can be 5 gold each. I will let you say that you had a good night partying, and I won't even get you to roll. You just gain one XP because I know you guys really want to level up. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm good for that. So if everyone five gold, five gold each, and you all spend that night, just you can describe how whatever you want to do for that night as a way, even if it's just sitting around drinking and re I am, uh, retelling the tale. Paying for Kilvars as well. Mine and Kilvars are paid for ten oh. gold. Kilvar. Ooh. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. Interesting indeed. <laughs> and, gold paid. and you 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 know, you reminisce about your adventure so far and you laugh and carry on and realize how good of a team you are and you all gain one XP. Ding ding ding, three people level up. <laughs> oh, you guys caught up! Um Okay. Now you get to do the level up process. Now it's all built in. Luther, I don't know if yours is built in or not. Being a ranger, I think it might be, but we'll see when I we get to it. I just pressed it and I get to roll talent and hit points. I don't know what that means. We'll see if it works. Oops. Um. Okay. So each of you guys, if you click on your background tab, and I'm gonna put your Please XP up. You should see a level up button there. Uh, I clicked it and it closed my window. Yeah. No I'm level up. Oh, there it is. Level up. Roll HP. Roll. So, don't we get something for hit points for being a dwarf when we level? Yeah, well, we get to roll 2d6. Okay. Did every level up? No. I can't remember. I think that, careful guys, I think this might be auto adding to your sheet. Just check for your HP. It did not. It did My not? HP is only 12. Okay, good. Okay, so as dwarves, I believe, yeah, you get to uh, roll 2 and take the highest. So. Oh, oh, poor Luther with the HP roll. No! <laughs> yeah, I'm used to it. I get to roll oh. a talent as well, apparently. Yeah. Oh, and, oh you get a choice. Uh, ooh. Ooh, Luther got a good one. Oh, I get to choose. Oh, you, you can get dex. You can get dex. Yeah, <laughs> I'm taking the dex, obviously. 
Okay. Oh, yeah. Both of you guys got the bonuses to melee or ranged attacks. We well, have to choose. Yeah, you gotta pick which one. I, I clicked it. I don't. Well, we had to drag and drop it onto her, the the pop up tab. Yeah, and the tab you drag it over from the chat over to that. Okay. Box. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I picked it. And so, if but, you're wondering why priests are not meant to be as good a fighter as a fighter, I think that's why the fighter gets the better option. You know. <laughs> Eddie, where do I drag and drop spells from? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, uh, why do they have to choose? Wait, I wait, wait. Choose, I, got both. I want to talk about spells before you drag that. You didn't roll for. Did you roll for spell yet? You never did. You. No, we just said oh. the drag and drop. It says. No. Okay. So I want to talk about spells. So when we first, when I first started this game, I described to you that I wanted the spells to be randomly determined. However. I'm going to leave it open for discussion now that we played the game a lot more. I want to, I'm going to go, go to each of you to get your opinion. Um, and I'll probably start with Bandek, but, uh, and then I'll go around. But my, one of my question is, do you want to randomly roll for what new spells you get? This goes for every class. Or do you, my other option that I come up with is I can give you guys the names of the spells without the descriptions, and you can pick a spell based off name. Like that will let you have more control over your character without knowing all the knowledge. But the reason I wanted to randomize it initially was so that you know it's just some of the spells, so people just don't always take the same spells because it's always usually just like I want fireball, I want mage armor, I want this, and then all the other spells are never picked. But it's up to you. What do you guys starting uh, with you, Mike? What, I, what would you prefer? I think I think if we rolled for it, you could have like dud level ups, and that feels bad. Okay, what do you think, Johnny? Uh, I would think the same thing. Nick? Because especially oh. for, we have the option for melee. If I was a pure mage and I leveled up and got something garbage, I would feel like it was pointless. All right, Nick. <laughs> yeah, I sort of concur with them. However, there might be a happy yeah. medium, but let's see what Steve says first. I, I, I will add in, I only support the rolling thing. If we get to roll twice and pick one, even. Okay. So at least it gives us a bit of, a bit of yeah. Because well. that's what I was going to suggest. Like if you if we rolled like I don't if if we roll twice and get to choose between two or three of the options, then maybe that could give a little bit of a random factor and an option of choice. So that's the little happy medium. What do you think, Steve? Uh, I like a good casino, but um, <laughs> being able to choose from uh, maybe multiple roles would be nice. Okay. Yeah, and that's why I was thinking about changing up my initial thoughts is just that I'm like, because I know, Bandic, you said you want to go a little bit more of like a paladin type. And I'm like, well, yeah. there's a couple spells here now that are kind of paladin-y. And I'm like, well, you know, if, if you mix, you're going to have more fun playing your character, then that's the main thing, right? Well, that's the thing too, right? Yeah. If you're going for something very specific, the random roll can really take away from that. All yeah. right. So uh, that's what we'll do then. So I'll give you the titles of them without the descriptions. <laughs> but you guys will probably know what they are based off the title. So... I believe I'm just quickly looking up priest here now. Um, yeah. Augury, yep. bless, blind slash deafen. That's one power, blind slash deafen. Uh, next one is cleansing weapon, smite, or zone of truth. And based on your 5e experience, you probably already know what they do, but uh, just the mechanics of I, it. So I, I don't even have to think. I want the one called Smite. I'm trying to be a paladin. <laughs> yeah, that's why. That was the one that made me think about it. So, so that is the paladin spell. So, yeah, but, like I just think I don't need to know what anything else does. Give me Smite. And, yeah. So Johnny Augury, bless, blind or deafen, cleansing weapon, Smite or Zone of Truth. Ba I'm debating Zone of Truth. Uh, I'm gonna go with Zone of Truth just for something different. Really. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What did you think he was gonna do? Oh, I don't know. I just zone of truth. I was. I'm just surprised. That's one of those spells. I just thought people would. It, all right, that's cool though. It could come in play. Well, it's there. All right. I'm zone of truth is a great spell. Drag it well, over. All right. Cool spell though, Johnny. Could come in handy. Oh, it will, Eddie. It, it will. <laughs> I also want to go donate ten gold that Luther did to the uh, to the church. Well, he paid five gold at, during the whole party thing from self and me i'm taking 10 gold and i'm giving it to the church okay so mark it off and you give it to your church 
and uh, 10 gold is a lot of money. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that definitely goes to some people in need, and you're definitely praised up for doing such a thing. You get uh, the love warmy feeling of the locals and commoners that appreciate you, Kilvar. Now, the last thing we need to do before carrying on. New titles for everyone! Starting with the, oh. starting with the fighter. Uh, what alignment are you? Neutral? Uh, pretty sure. Let me double check. Yes. Everybody look for your alignment while you're waiting. Uh, fighter. So you, uh, you just went from warrior to barbarian. Barbarian. That suits me. <laughs> so if you want to update your thing in brackets. Yeah, I just, the put yeah, I just barbarian. did. Rothgar barbarian. Priest, Kilvar, what's your alignment? Kilvar has a complicated uh, one, I think. <laughs> oh, so you're evil. evil. <laughs> no, 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 Oh, I found he it. He is lawful. Okay. And what about you, Bannock? I think you're probably the same. Lawful. You're, so both of you went from acolytes to crusader. So if you want to change Ooh, your... Perfect. So you're now crusader Kilvar and crusader Bandek. The ranger? What alignment were you? Oh, neutral. You went from Stranger to Wayfarer. So you all got cool new titles. Hey, on the road again. Now, since you're traveling back again, there will be no navigation checks for the entire route. However, there is the possibility of danger. So, um, we have a shortcut. When we step out onto the road, mm -hmm. Kilvar will stop, say he's about to say a prayer, and if anyone wants to join him, they can. I will join, I... but I'm saying a prayer to... Uh... St. Tagris. I don't. <laughs> Luther? <laughs> Luther's just waiting for you to say it. <laughs> <laughs> He'll say it. Alright. Alright, so you say a nice prayer? Yep. And, uh, okay. With that, we will check. First three hours. No. Second three hours. No. And the last travel of this first day. No. You all may camp. Give me a survival check with advantage, Ranger, to see how well your camp is for the night. Excellent. <clears throat> so that is a f where it's a 15. I'm making it only one check for the night. Yes. All right. So I need to determine. I'm going to randomly determine who's on watch at that time. So at the time that the encounter happened. So um, I guess I could just roll a d4, right? Yeah. So just to declare who is what before you roll. Yeah. I'm just going to put you in the same order and we'll go clockwise from Bandek and two is Kilvar. Okay. So and three. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to see who was on watch during this time. Kilvar. All right, Kilvar. Um, all right. All right. Bear with me a moment, everybody. I will uh, actually I'll use a map for this one, I suppose. So the question is, the one person who is awake, Kilvar, give me a wisdom check. Ooh, okay. I'm going to say that's enough to let you be aware of what is happening. I'm going to roll initiative, and there's not going to be a surprise round. And then I'm just going to roll initiative, and then we'll take it from there. Uh, roll. I got to reset initiative. Roll all. And then you will know what it is. Based on the name. Oh, Your characters okay. technically don't know that. Uh, but what I will say is... Bursting out down here... Which you can now... Can you, can you guys see that? Yeah. Uh, you're just make camp, everyone else is asleep, and then you just hear the rush quickly out of nowhere, the rustle of trees, the breaking of branches, and a <laughs> and like something is charging in your direction, and you have enough perception about you to look up and you see a large boar heading in your direction very aggressively, and it is your turn. And the other okay. three are asleep. <laughs> so kill her. He's going to grab his sword and shield, start slamming the shield, or sword off the shield to wake him up. And he's going to scream for everyone to wake up, and he's moving six blocks down, and he's attacking. Nice. 
And uh, right now, I said, uh, would I be correct in saying everyone except potentially Kilvar doesn't have their armor on because we're sleeping? Uh, when you're traveling, I would think you'd keep your armor on. Okay, I wasn't sure. It never really came up, but like, um, yeah. Did we get re- not get rest if we had our armor on? Um, okay. No, well, we can talk about it real quick now, but I always felt like the travelers just kept it on. If you're sleeping on the side of the road, you keep it on. Um, or maybe, what do you guys think? I know realistically you wouldn't really sleep in plate mail. No, I'm just going to typically assume that you, when you're traveling in dangerous environments, you're going to keep your armor on. But if you're back in the city, or if I ever ambush you during, like, downtime, I'm going to assume you probably don't have your armor on and stuff. Okay, that's fair, because, like, we know we're in a dangerous situation, so we sort of keep our armor. But, like, if anyone is wearing plate, they sort of loosen some of the joints a little bit so they can sort of relax a little bit. But, okay, uh, just want to know. Yeah. Uh, I think it would be a bit, it could be, if I get you guys to strip off all metal types of armor each night, that means any night ambushes, you guys will have no ACs. Like, it is, yeah, is I know. That, are you well, okay with that? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not okay with it. <laughs> but if that's how the system works. No, there's no mention of it in the book about that. Okay, then let's keep our let's, we got to make up our own rule. All right. Well, Kilvar, you draw the blade and sword and you charge into another boar that's charging you. Um, and what'd you roll? A four. Big swing and a miss. Big swing and a miss. Rothgar. Um, did you say anything, Kilvar, to wake him up? Yeah, he did. Banged he banged on the shield. Oh, right. You slammed your shield and sword together. Right. All right. Well, Rothgar. You eyes open. I'm sure your weapon, the sword, is nearby. Uh, but oh, definitely. But uh, in terms of like movement, like is this sort of like D and D, like half your movement to get up or something like that, or do I have my full movement this turn? No, nope, you got to use half to get up. Okay, so you just have to get up, sort of like quickly take in, see like Kilver rush <laughs> off towards the boar. Um, I'm just going to go. You can use arrow keys, like, remember. <laughs> I just sort of moved myself there. Um, I just move, use my move to go there and just take like, as a defensive position. More or less, if it tries to charge past, my intention is sort of block the camp itself or anyone else. Like I know Luther wants to make some distance. I don't know what Bandex plan is, but like, I'm just trying to sort of hold it off. So I got my shield and my weapon up. I don't know if there's anything you need me to do to take a defensive action. I could, did, was that a thing we would do now? I'll do a, um, I'll hold an action because I know this came up to if it comes within my attack range, I'll swing at it. Okay, you'll do that. Perfect. Yep. That's uh, my turn. The boar is up and it might as well attack the one that charged it like a boar would do. Tusk attack. Yes. You sidestep, but it gets a second attack. I feel everything we're going to face from now on has at least two attacks. So I'm going to say um, the way this works is it comes and it tried to charge at you. You sidestep the initial charge. And then it, you know how a boar will swing its head to its side with its hooked tusks. And it like torques its head to the, to the right where you dodged. And you get lightly impaled for three damage from its horns and tusks. Um, and with that, we move to, you hear more rustling from up above. No. So it's going to gore one of these two based on its movement. So low is Bandek, high is Luther. Well, either way, it's going to go there, but it's goring Luther as your eyes open. <laughs> and you just are going to get gored. Just stayed where I was. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Alright, Luther, you are prone, but I'll still let you try to use your ability if you wanted to. Yeah, well, I'm awake, so I gotta give it a try. Uh, <clears throat> Dex, uh, 12 for this. I gotta get some better action music for next time. Just like, yeah, I'm gonna do this with advantage. Roll away. <laughs> yep. Oh, and, oh, nice. and it used your trinket, did you? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. All right, so now you can place yourself in a straight line up to, was it near, I think I said? So 30 feet. So I'm assuming that'll include the getting up, so only 15 feet straight. 
So yeah. now that means it's attacking Bandek. Because <laughs> remember, it, 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 go. the way his, Ranger's ability is, is uh, just if it moves within range of it, he can interrupt the movement part to react. So, you know, yep. it is coming here to gore you. You kind of like do a handspring flip up like the rock in wrestling. You know? <laughs> and then you like flip out of the way into the trees. And once it gets here, it had you in its sight. But once you flip out of the way... That only leaves the dwarf. Uh, tusk attack. Oh, these guys are whiffing, man. And second attack. Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, kind of a similar thing. Uh, you get up, you block it with the shield, Bandek. As you're lying prone, you block it with your shield, but then it just kind of like it's rotting in the ground and hooking with its uh, tusks, and it damages you for also three damage. Uh, Luther, you're up. All right, I'm going to attack the terrified boar, because <laughs> uh, I will not be killed by bacon. You will not be killed by bacon. AC, it, that is enough. Oh, that's a big damage. You always pump out huge damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Huge arrow lodges right into the front of this thing. Half the arrow sticking out of it. <clears throat> Blood spraying on poor Bandek as he's lying underneath a big boar. <laughs> well, Bandek, you're up and being showered by blood. Uh, I am going to stand up using half my movement. Yes. Uh, and then I am going to just roll to hit this board that's next to me. Okay. That is enough for five damage. One, two, three, four, five. You chop into it, draw an even more blood, draw a big slice across the back, exposes part of its uh, spine and a bunch of flabby meat, which smells of bacon. <laughs> But, uh, not yet, not yet. It's not cooked. But, this thing, yeah, brutal hits. Kilvar, you are up. Uh, Kilvar is going to take a swing at the selfish boar again. He's selfish, he's very... Oh, I wanted to point out at the top of the round. Nice. I wanted to point out at the top of the round, you're hearing a lot of squealing coming from up north this way. Um, but it's more like lower pitch squealing. Um, you recognize it. You've been around pigs and hogs enough to know that it's probably its young is up in this direction. And uh, there's kind of there's a bunch of just hear a lot of boar young up here and they're squealing and panicking. Soon to be orphans. And uh, it's kind of sent these boars into a frenzy. But Kilvar. Soon, soon to be bacon bits. <laughs> there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. You swing, I guess. Unless you guys want to describe your own things, I'll keep doing it. But you, uh, <laughs> you, you deliver a hefty chop across its face and jaw. Part of one of its, uh, a bunch of its teeth fall out as the blade cracks into its mouth as well. Ugly, ugly gore. Rothgar, you are up. Hey, Rothgar, I'm going to come down here and give uh, Kilbar a hand with this one. I'm going to swing at it one head with the slaughter axe. Slaughter axe. Ooh, I got hit. Ooh, and I roll good damage. Max damage. Nine damage. Eight. It had eight HP left. Oh, how do you, no, you want to do this? I sort of like, and, and just sort of waking up, and like, I just have tunnel vision as I'm coming in, and I just like swing up with the axe and just sort of like cut its head straight off. It just sort of flies into the air. <laughs> All right. Uh, the terrified boar. Uh, it's gonna keep fighting. I'm not rolling morale for it. It's, uh... <laughs> trying, it's trying to defend its young. And it's just gonna go down. Uh, gonna could, go to, gonna could go defend down. its young by staying the fuck away. <laughs> Shut up. Um, <laughs> but I think it's just gonna go down trying to gore. And, uh, going at the dwarf. Oh. Oh my god. One, two, three, four, five. You're taking that hit, right? Yeah. Yep. Second to gore attack. Or second tusk attack. Yep. Oh, okay. Whew, big hit, though. You get, like, it hits you back. Uh, 
kind of kind of up against a tree, and then it like comes up with its horns and tusks, and it kind of hooks up under your armor, and just oh, that one hurt, Luther, you're up. Okay, take another arrow. No, oh. <laughs> overkill. How do you want to kill him? <laughs> uh, I'll just put another arrow right next to the one I already put into it. Okay, and with that, and all the chops from each of the dwarves, uh, this one just drops down to the ground as well. Well, that thing had a special feature ability that did not come into play, and I'm not going to tell you what it was. <laughs> um, you might meet boars again someday. So, uh, yeah, you made short work of them, although they did get some Lixian. Um, yes. <clears throat> with that said, they are dead, and you hear the squeals up north of... Uh, the young without parents uh, in a panic. But otherwise, we are out of combat. Uh, any of those arrows salvageable? Um, yeah. So how many did you shoot? Two. So it's always just uh, a D whatever you shot minus one. <laughs> so I'll just so say... So you'll you get back to one. I'll you'll just say you get one back, back. yeah. So All right. you're Sounds able to get good. one. One of them hit the bone too much and shattered. The other one you're able to pull out and reuse. <clears throat> okay. Is okay. there any going to be any healing attempts here? Well, you know what? Um, well, we were taking a long rest anyway. Yeah, we'll just say you guys will take an extra little bit of time to make sure you all get your long rests. Yeah. Can we like harvest any like yes you know, meat from the boars <laughs> for sure? Uh, oh, can we ever use rations on the way out? Any from back? Um, yeah, remember after each night we were saying to mark off a ration. Another one on the way out, and another one besides in the today. Basically just eat a ration whenever you guys take a long rest. Yeah. It's the easiest way just to remember to do it. Um, however, if you'd like to take the time here, do you guys want to salvage and carry some boar meat, or do you just want to eat the meat here now and leave the rest behind and save a ration? Oh, I'm carving it up. Yeah, it, I think I think how how long will it keep if we take it with us though? True. <laughs> um uh, cuz like if it lasts for the next day, then like we can take some with us, but if it's going to spoil before then, then there's no point. Cuz it depends it on us. the temperatures I roll too, but for the most part, I guess you if you want to take enough for your next meal, it should be fine, right? Okay, so I say we use some for now and take a little bit extra. And I won't make you roll for that, especially with a ranger and a fighter that grew up on the land. You guys could easily... Uh... <laughs> a barbarian? Oh, yes, a barbarian. I, I, yeah. There's actually I, a barbarian I, I, I class now. I get to level three for you not to use my official title. I'm hesitant because there's an actual barbarian class now, but that's fine. Um, since this came out, but I will call you your title. You are a barbarian. <laughs> All right. So who's carrying the, the boar with meat? A ranger background. Whoever's carrying um, boar meat, I'll just make it take one encumbrance, but it'll be enough meat to feed the party. I can carry the meat for one long rest. So um, any longer than that would mean that it'd be two days old, not refrigerated. <laughs> So yeah. or kept on ice. So I uh, on unless we find some method of like you know keeping it cool, then yeah. Um, so they, I'll, I'll take it so you can add it there. There was probably ways that they dry, took the time to like dry out meat, right? And stuff, but you're not doing that on the road. Um, well, they they yeah, you know, like, if we were getting this from a butcher shop, it would probably be like, you know, prepared enough that we could take it out. But this is just literally raw meat. Is there so. a way to smoke it like you're saying or any way to prepare it? Like it would you, to smoke it in the wild would take another long rest since not moving i would say yeah all right so if we're fine with just saying, unless you want to base um, it off a survival check that's your call if you want to simplify i'm just thinking realistically how much uh meat um, well, realistically you'd have to make a little smoker shelter for it and then you'd have to cut it up in strips and smoke it for a certain amount of time so that it dries out all the moisture and yeah, okay. Well, unless you probably don't want to do that. Um, more random encounter checks <laughs> as you're trying to get meat. So, Rothgar, if you want to just mark down um, boar meat one, that'll be enough to feed the full party on your next long rest. All right, so you finish your long rest, and you get back on the road. 
Um, I'm trying to bring up the scene. Whatever, I'm just going to roll on C. Um, so, the next day of travel, we've got three checks. As long as we don't get a one. That's the first uh, did, Weren't we able to get rid of one of the checks because we found a shortcut? Oh, right, right. So there's a, your, thanks for reminding me. So there's the two checks. Yay, okay, you made it back to the Citadel. Um, okay. And you're going to go, are you guys going to go into the main entrance again? All right, so whoever wants to light any light sources, do so now, and then uh, we're going to get into the crawling order. Here. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to cast light. Everybody's doing all the light, huh? Okay. We're all anxiously awaiting <laughs> Madeira's light. Yeah. Weaver is using his luck for his light. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> Critical <laughs> failure. Oh, oh my. my. You're, you're, uh, I, 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 can, I can see him sh being shaky in his wavering. I said, be still, my brother in light, and I'll use my luck for him. <sighs> can I not accept this? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Technically, you guys have to tell. Yeah, I'm not gonna make you take someone else's luck because it's it's you, Kilvar, who can choose to take someone's luck if it's given to you. You know. So. Yeah. I appreciate the <laughs> gesture. I'm not gonna take it though. Okay, Kilvar okay. takes the critical fail. So once again, <laughs> your light has failed you once again. After and you thought yet oh. all that stuff you did, all the preaching you did in the streets and the alleys of the city, was enough to get it back. Kilvar has made mistakes and he knows it, and he now knows how he must fix it. <laughs> uh, I am going to cast light on my shield. Okay, go for it. You did not use your lock band deck. You still have it, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, wow. Like, normal. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> reflex thing. Absolutely reflex <laughs> thing. I, I want I want to say a prayer and like a like a beacon of light just comes down on me, <laughs> and as I stand, you just see like this pillar of radiating light. And I can put it as if I critically success. I can, uh, I can make two things light up correctly. No, no, I'll allow it because it just says any numerical thing. So I'll let it be on two targets. I usually let spells okay. be on two targets. So as it as it radiates and you see my holy symbol light up, it and like after seeing Kilvar, his light flicker and fade. You oh see mine radiate so heavily. And I say, my brother in light, let us be strong. And then you see his Madeira medallion light up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Like so much light, I can't handle it. You have to take the overflow. Well, I just added a light source to Kilvar naturally, because you can tell he's now glowing with 30 foot of light. <laughs> the, di the dice have a story to tell. <laughs> he's glowing with light. His eyes are seething with rage. <laughs> oh, the that's rage so rage. good. And I notice them kind of smirking, and I'm taking note. <laughs> <laughs> Go to a notebook. Where's his hair next to uh, Rothgar? Just underlined. So we'll just remember to take it off of Kilvar at the same time the Bandex light spell runs out. So will that one. All right, I'm on pausing the game. Um, you guys can move as a unit. So you can go six yeah. squares and then another six if you want to dash. Uh, so who wants... Oh, I can lead. Uh, oh, wait, was I lead before? In here? What, uh, usually it was... Whoever had the light it? source, it was Bandek when he had the yeah, light. I, it was Bandek leading last time. Yeah, and I was behind Bandek. But that was because he had the light. Yeah. <clears throat> And I so, don't say that to rub it in Kilvar. I'm just yeah. <laughs> so uh, I can lead or I can go behind whoever's leading. Makes no difference. I wanted that crit so bad. <laughs> and you got it. Happy birthday. <laughs> uh, so who's leading? Uh, me or Bandek? You can. Okay. Uh, you can sort of stick behind me just sort of get in like an aura. So. All right. So start moving. And Bandek, you probably want to hug behind Rothgar to give him light as he goes. 
Uh, left. Go left. That is wait. right. Wait, this is where we're supposed to go, right? No. Really? We've done that. That's the Edder Cap Cave. You want to go back to the Edder Cap Cave, we can. Isn't that where we're going? Wasn't there a hallway we didn't explore? I thought that's where we were going. Oh, we could go that way. Sure. Where's the other spot? I thought we explored everything else. We have not. Okay, so where do we want to go? Let's say we said this. I thought we were heading back to, to that hallway that we found the Edder Caps. I thought that's where we were going. Well, we, did, we didn't discuss it, but if you want to head back to the Edder Cap, there, is, there was another hallway, yeah. If we don't go there, where else are we going? Just to sort of like we could sort I mean, of have this question before we went in. I think the Edercap hallway will lead to the other place, but I don't know that for sure. I have a big blank on my map, but there is an up and right as well. Okay, uh, let's go to the Edercaps. We cleared them out, so that should be safe. So let's try that. Okay, so you in total you could have moved up to twelve squares if you're dashing. Yeah, and I got here. Everyone else, fall in line, and I will spin. Light. <laughs> okay, okay. So, are we going this way? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It will. And now it is the top of round sixty-five. Keep going. We're shielding our eyes as we come in. Yeah, you're used to it. That's fine. Good call. As everything okay. brightens up here, and the whole room reflects with your light. Oh, I will pause for a second. Come back a little oh. bit. Oh, right here yeah. uh, in the bottom right corner, there is another rat thing against the wall. Oh, we we opened that one. Not, we opened all the. No, nope. no, we didn't open that one. We left. Oh, Not no, this we, one. oh, okay. Oh, we saw it. We just didn't open it. Okay. Yeah, but they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I'll just say, uh, I, oh, it's you, the one guy who was alive. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, it's a uh, you can see the feet and hands sticking out of a long dead beast man. Okay, we did all <clears throat> I'm gonna go search the body, maybe it has something we need. Okay, I'll sort of like wait here until if someone wants to search it. Okay, I don't know how many movements I have left for this round. Uh, one, two, three. It's fine. I'll say you can get down enough to here and it just to do the search. I think it might have been one extra square, but it's fine. Um, and you search it, and there is nothing of note. Yeah. And I will take whatever part of the round to catch up. That's fine. Yeah. fine. Um, we so, we could sort of end it. We sort of like just sort of like wait it there. Yeah. Um, while he was well, no, I, I used a bit of the extra movement, so no. Um, so, okay, so start of a new round then. Well, top in case of sixty six. So every two rounds in here was a random encounter. Nope. So, oh, nope. Okay. As you can continue. To okay. What? Oh, we see something. <laughs> All right. So this room. <clears throat> All right. A skeleton. You can highlight over that token if you want. A skeleton is eerily pinned to the citadel wall. Its bony hands clasping a spear jutting from its ribcage at a dis display of past struggles. The walls are adorned with chipped mosaics depicting uh, dolphins. And, uh, yeah, they're very faded. And there are four white robes hanging on pegs, remnants, uh, remnants of a bygone era. Uh, waiting a return for whoever wore those robes, but that day will never come. Hmm. Is it the skeleton's like pinned to the wall? Yep. Through its rib cage, there's a uh, spear through its chest, and its hands are like clasping the spear that impaled it onto the wall. Oh, okay. Uh, from there, uh, you uh, can make out that the skeleton is also yeah. wearing decayed crimson dyed leather armor. And there appears to be a bronze sword hanging from its belt. I sort of moved in so people want to come in to sort of see the room. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll spend my turn coming in. Uh, I'm going to inspect the body, see if there's anything of note on us. Okay. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Um, nothing else of note. So there's a bronze sword hanging from his belt. There's leather armor and the spear impaled. Uh, looks like it took a lot of inhuman force to ram that into the wall. 
Um, otherwise, it looks like it'll take a lot of strength to pull it free. If that's uh, something you want to do, but that's all. well. I, I'm guessing the spear doesn't look like you it's know a, like anything special. It's uh, all you can tell from here. It's a bronze spear. No, I'll leave it because even if it was good, I'm good with my okay. weapons yeah. there now. So yeah. What's everybody else want to do for their action? Uh, can I check out the door? Um, yeah, without moving up to it, you just want to like look at it from afar. You can oh. do a wisdom check, um, which is like search this thirty foot area for anything of note. <laughs> can I go? I could walk up to the door. Yeah, but you, it takes an action to fully investigate it. You know what I mean? Like the search for traps or whatever. So. Yeah. And you said there's cloaks on the walls as well if people want to take a look at those. Uh, robes. But, uh, robes, sorry. Tapestries of dolphins? No, oh, those are there as well. <laughs> but are they hung on the wall or they're just... Yeah, they're hung on the wall as well. And then there was four hooks with four white robes on it as well. I'm just going to uh, peek behind the tapestries to see if there's anything there. Okay, so going with Bandek, uh, as you kind of look around the whole room within like a 30-foot radius around you, um, you do not notice anything out of place. You don't see any traps, um, don't see any secret doors as far as you're aware, and nothing out of place. Kilvar and... Luther, what do you want to do for your actions? Open around the tapestries. They are long withered, no longer of value, and it just looks like a scene of dolphins. Oh, sorry, uh, just to point out, I don't care about the tapestries, I'm looking behind the tapestries. Yeah, and you search behind them, and you can give me a intellect chest, since you're technically looking directly, uh, investigating that specifically. <clears throat> You're pretty confident there is nothing of note, nothing special about these tapestries. Totally useless, valueless, no value, and not really hiding anything. And Kilvar, what do you want to do? Uh, he's just going to watch them do their thing. I'm surprised you're not checking the robes just to sort of see if they have any holy symbols on them. <laughs> it seems like an absolutely Kilvar thing. Yeah, but it would be not the one he was looking for. It would probably be the bull god. Okay, uh, so I guess we'll go to the top of round 67. Yep. So I'll head over to the door. Uh, does, is it locked? Or there? Hang on. There is a... <laughs> you try it, and like a lot of the other doors that you've seen in this area, you, tur you try to like move the door knob and handle kind of thing it doesn't appear like it's locked it just appears like it's stuck like it's been reinforced and jammed shut okay that's a little bit of brute force kid to get rid of go ahead and take advantage of my grit to try and force the door open uh so that's a strength check advantage right okay yes it's been a while so strength check advantage the DC 19. is 18 <laughs> for a stuck door, oh, similar yes. to all the other stuck doors you found in this place. Um, but with brute force, <clears throat> you are able to rip it off the hinges. But that took an action to do so. Uh, Rothgar door breaker. <laughs> so the rest of you can continue if you'd like. Or if you had any movement uh, left, you could use that. Oh, yeah. I only had uh, two squares, so I could move four more. So I'll go one... Two, three, four, and so it rounds a corner there, but can't see anymore. But that's movement. Okay, everyone else use your movement. You all have actions each. Do you plan to use anything with them? No, I'm just waiting to move again. Yep. And Kilbar? Okay. Anything from Kilbar? Nope, same. Okay, top of 68. Got a roll for a random encounter. Nothing. One, two, Light! <laughs> Three, four, five. Oh, okay, so we got a hallway going north or a door in front of us. Uh huh. Door or hall? 
You're leading. Door. <laughs> Is it uh, a lock? It is not barred or locked. Shall I? Okay, hold on a sec. Okay, what am I? I'm just trying to look at my map to see where you guys are right now. Okay. Um, <clears throat> from where you can stand looking in, uh, looks like it's a bit of a hallway. It can head north or south. It's tall. It's 15 feet tall in here. And... That is all you can see from here. So I've got some more movement, though, so I'm going to move in. Move in a little bit more. Okay. Oh, what's as that? You, as you step in to the south of you there, you see a 10-foot bronze bull statue stands with lowered mm. horns appearing ready to charge. I don't like that. And, and embedded in the statue's forehead is a shining emerald. Mm. I think we should leave that emerald. <laughs> like, we've seen a few of these statues impaling other bodies. Um, Clearly valuable enough to be worth XP. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> the clear trap. <laughs> you can't tempt me. Um, Can't I? I, have enough con I have enough context clues, Mr. GM, to see what's happened to other adventurers. <laughs> uh, and can we see what's at the north end of this room from the light? Um, no, the tunnel just seems to keep going. Okay. Um, I've got a little bit of movement left. Um, I'm, I, I'm not going to speak for anyone else in the party. I'm going to ignore that for now the bull statue and i'm going to go north just to see okay that's all my movement you guys can come in and see the bull statue for yourself and decide if you want to inspect it or uh, try to take that emerald all right everyone else finish your movements and um are you happy with where you are um I'm gonna go for the emerald, or the, the jewel. Okay, did you have enough movement to get down there? He should. I should. And you have an action left to try to... Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do you plan to do? Because there is a emerald, like, embedded into the head of this it's bull in between the, the horns. So what's your plan? How tall up is the head? Uh, it is a ten foot tall bronze bull statue with lowered horns so we'll say the horns are probably you know maybe six feet off the ground okay so i'm just gonna grab my sword and jab it underneath and try to pry it off you have a 10 foot pole <laughs> among the party at least <laughs> okay so for that um are you trying to like pluck it out or smash it out pluck it out okay so, so like get under the edge and I guess try to give apply that would pressure. be more of a dexterity check. Why would you do this, Eddie? <laughs> okay. You stick the sword in there and you're cranking it, cranking it, and it doesn't seem to be giving. There's a slight wobble to it, as in like it would be possible, but you're struggling to do it. Okay. Top of 69. Now, before you move, something happens. <laughs> really? Or maybe not. Four is good, I'm sure. You may proceed as if you were normal. Okay. Um, do we want... Bendix next to me, like... Does Bandic want to try and, like, check for traps in this hallway to make sure there's not going to be anything that'll trigger the bull behind us? Nope. Okay. <laughs> I'm going on, Faith. Hey. One, two, three, four, five, six. Another door. And it does go further around the corner, but, yeah, I'm going to go for the door. Hey, is it locked? The door is 
Mm, not locked. Oh. What do we see? Oh, what do you see? I'm trying to see from this point of view with the amount of light you got. Um, I can step in a little bit if it makes it easier. Because right now you can't really see much. Uh, okay. You can see a little. You do see okay. evidence of long dried blood splatters and stains on the cold stone floor ahead of you. This looks promising. <laughs> Light. Okay, so now that you got a bit more light shining in, <clears throat> you can see there are six different, like, little cubby holes here. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> the, uh, the room is adorned with a series of square black plinths, each displaying a simple terracotta bowl, hinting at a ritualistic past. So in each of these six things, there's a terracotta bowl, and uh, you'd have to get closer to probably investigate it in more detail than that. Okay, I got like, uh, <clears throat> what squares is here? I got one more square move. Um, I'll just go there. Uh, and these doors, is there anything on the doors? The two doors in front of you? Um, yeah. No, there's no markings. These look like just the same doors that you see uh, throughout the rest of the chamber. Okay. Well, we, we had to dash to get in here, but people could sort of move in a little bit further if they want. But my movement's used up. Okay, everyone else, go ahead to use your movement. If you're dashing, go twice. Um, I'm just going to stay in the middle of the room for the light. Okay, then am I good to go to the next round? Yeah, I am two spaces behind them with the dash. Okay, top around 70, so it's an even number. I roll for a random encounter. <gasps> oh! Okay. Okay, everybody. Okay. <laughs> okay, I will get um, all of you to roll wisdom checks for me, please. Wisdom. Just to see if we notice what's about this spot. Three. <laughs> oh, the dwarves is good. Well, we tasted yeah. clearly. Yeah, clearly. <clears throat> <laughs> um. Okay, I'm trying to get everything in position here. Okay. Now, <clears throat> creeping in this room, you're looking to the left, looking at the different uh, terracotta jars, and you're looking at all the blood stains on the floor. When, Bandek, you do hear, uh, in just enough time to react uh, that there's going to be danger, what do you shout out? <laughs> As... By the light! He startles all of you <laughs> as th this door swings open to reveal, apparently, a helpless skeleton scout. Um, oh God. Oh God. <laughs> it opens up, sees us, and then just closes it again. And you can hear like the wrapping of its feet on the door as it skitters away. So it does not get a uh, it does not get a surprise round on you because you have heard it coming. But that being said, I'm going to reset the initiative and roll all. <laughs> so scout with the 20. Can't really? be mad. You've got top Imagine. again. Imagine. That's shocking. <laughs> so shocking. Oh my. All right. Now, these skeletons, uh, that skeleton is scout. <laughs> it looks- Singular or plural, Eddie? Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, that skeleton scout, <laughs> um, <clears throat> you notice, looks like a thief. A long dead thief, like adventure, like a bit of a loose backpack on the back, a bit of old rope rotten away. Um, and it's got uh, a short bow and a short sword, wearing leather armor, that kind of thing. And uh, as soon as <laughs> it's... 
Does we he spent have arrows? days in this dungeon and did not see a single arrow. If this guy comes in with a bow and arrow. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he's, 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 yeah, he's got it. Um, and with that, he steps in up around into this corner. And he's going to shoot, said short bow. Uh, and he starts to... And he's like clack, clacking his mouth. Like he's trying to talk, but it's just like a skeletal uh, jaw clacking bone on bone. Um, and with that, he is going to shoot one of you. <clears throat> so I'm going to do it on the bottom left player list. So one is uh, Kilvar, two Bandek, three Rothgar, four is Luther. Luther. Ah. So, short bow. Woo! Woo, 15. That does hit you. Yes. One, two. <laughs> Half your health. As a short bow arrow lodges into your guts. <laughs> Sinks deep. Uh, kill her, you were up. <clears throat> uh, kill her is going to step down. Uh, and I'm going to attempt to heal my friend Lothar. As I is it three d six now? Well, no one. Uh, roll number one d six is to one plus half of your level rounded down. Two d six. Um. Yeah, it's every second level. Why do you have a plus one there? I'm just curious. Plus three is what your stat. What's the other plus one from? Do you have plus one to spell casting or something? I have no idea. <clears throat> I'm just not sure if you always had that or not. I'm just curious where it came from. I think that's the round it. Oh no way! No. Oh, um, it my wis my stat is my charisma. Uh, yeah, it's something. Yeah. I have plus one on spellcrafting traps from I've always had it. Oh nice. And he, okay. And after, as I heal him for eight, I will tell him that his donation to the church was received and handed in. And then I will move up here. What are you, what are you thinking of that, Luther? <laughs> you like get shot in the guts and you look down, oh shit, that really hurt. And he's, <laughs> you get healed by the dwarf and he's like, don't worry, your donation to the church has been received. <laughs> Such a weird thing to happen. I'm a little perplexed by uh, the arrow in my, in my gut. But uh, I'm going to make a mental note that I can... Uh, buy my way to Madeira if I need it. <laughs> Alright. Well, a 1 is Rothgar and a 2 is Bandek. That's a Bandek. Um, <clears throat> I was rushing to here. A, a skeletal fighter this time. Not a scout. Comes in. This one is wearing chain mail and uh, has a short bow. And a short sword. <clears throat> um, okay. So, it is attacking Bandek with its short sword. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Well, first off, is 14 even enough? It's exactly your AC, so it is enough. But it's a measly one damage. As it just gives a minor flesh wound. Mm -hmm. Bandek, you're up. I'm going to hold my uh, my illuminated shield, and I'm going to thrust it forward, and I'm going to cast Turn Undead. Love it. Oh, snap. Okay, so how does that work? Oh, there it is over there. Um, <clears throat> you rebuke kind of forcing them to flee. Undead creatures near you, so it's going to be just the ones that can see you, because you got to hold up your holy symbol. Uh, yeah. So it's these two here. Uh, must make a charisma check opposed by your spell casting check okay Stuff cannot be that charismatic I want to see negative modifiers Eddie <laughs> well, well, do I, uh, I roll the manifest it right yeah so <coughs> your, your spell skill is what charisma I think yeah so you yep. gotta roll charisma uh, charisma check well no he rolls his normal spell casting check yeah, but I was saying wisdom is his spell. Yeah, well, you get your spell casting check. Yeah. Well, right, is that so a spell on your sheet? I, I was just thinking yeah, that was yeah. an ability. Yeah. That's that's a spell, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Okay, so it's fine. Um, 
Uh, I'm gonna use my luck to re-roll that. Yeah. This was the whole thing. Yeah, I was getting confused like it was an ability, but it's a spell, right? So... Okay, with a bit of luck, um, you use your turn on dead with a 16. So I need to beat a 16 by rolling... Uh, and they each gotta roll individually. Charisma check. The scout. With a negative one. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the scout is good. Let's check the fighter. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Eddie! <laughs> okay, you hold it up and you're like determined and you got you know, there's a lot of like your light radiating from this. And the skeletons just look at you and it looks like they're just they're res they're they're they don't like it. They just barely passed, but they're, uh, they're not fleeing. Whatever dark energies is holding these, uh, here or keeping them here. Like uh, how? Because it's meant to be. That's how. Luther, you're up. All right. I'm going to try to put an arrow back that hit me, the helpless scout. Going for the scout. It goes between his rib cages and hits the wall behind and deflects into the corner. It's very hard to shoot a. Well, he's wearing armor and stuff too, but it's very hard to shoot. Technically, there's no in-game mechanic for it, but some other fantasy games, if you try to shoot arrows at skeletons, it's at disadvantage and stuff because, like, you know how hard it is to hit a skeleton with an arrow. <laughs> but Rothgar, you're it. up. Uh, strike the mischievous skeleton fighter in oh, my yeah. face. Oh yeah, mischievous. Uh, this is one-handed. We have the shield. Oh, that's a hit. Uh, is it, uh, it's only two damage though. You snap a bit of uh, a bit of ribs, start flying off, crumble to the ground. It just continues to clatter. A loving skeleton mage <laughs> appears. And now do you see these? These look like a long dead adventuring party. You got your fighter, your thief, and your mage in the back here. He's wearing robes, like a toppled little hat that's rotted away. Um, <clears throat> and he has a staff in his hand. And he is going to... Um, let's see. Now, this would have been done in advance, so I have to roll this. I'm rolling this in advance because they we would have did this before they come in to ambush you. Uh, so this is not taking this turn. Oops, I apparently can't roll like that. Okay, so I just got to do it. Intellect DC 11. Okay, so uh, he has magic armor up in advance because they were preparing to ambush you. Uh, but as for his action, he's going to target one person he can see, and he can only really see you three. So, um, okay, one... Maybe the skeleton's in love with the mischievous spider <laughs> and wants to take revenge against me. <laughs> so I'm going to base it on the bottom left corner, so uh, from top to bottom, D3. That's uh, Kilvar. All right, Kilvar. Uh, I need to make a magic test to see if the spell goes off. Oh, I have advantage on this test, apparently. Why? Well, you'll see well, why. You don't need to say why, it does just be... Um, DC 11. Alright, because it's magic missile, that's why. Um, it's, you know, you have advantage on your check to cast a spell. D4 damage to any target. One, two, three, four, as four magic... <laughs> Four little magic missiles to swirl past all them and magically find their target in the back. Kilvar. Um, yeah, and this one radiates with a magic aura around it. It clearly has mage armor up as well. But otherwise, top of the round, Skeletal Scout is going to shoot once again. Um, I guess I'm going to roll to see who he attacks. Kilvar. They're double teaming <laughs> Kilvar here. <laughs> Fuck this dwarf in particular. Short bow. <laughs> Nat 20, baby. Oh, are you kidding me? 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Jesus. <laughs> now this one, you feel uh, Kilvar. Uh, in between your armor, it takes a chunk out of the side of your neck. On your right side of your neck, the arrow just rips through and takes part of your neck with it. A brutal hit as blood is gushing from your neck. But it's your turn. Okay, Kilvar takes his holy symbol, tries to ignore the fact it's bathed in light. And he's going to t- attempt to heal himself. And he succeeds. Just enough. Just enough. How much do you heal? That's plus four doing lots of work. That's nice. Uh, 17. And that's you healed for 10, right? Oh, I never healed myself, but I healed 10, yeah. Yeah, I put plus 10. That didn't cap you out. You must be one short. <laughs> it didn't, I am. Yeah, okay. I just realized I can actually type in the number, like plus 10, and then hit enter instead of clicking it each time, but I like clicking it sometimes. <laughs> uh, the skeletal fighter. He's got these two targets in front of him. One is Rothgar. Come for me. Two is Bandai. Nope. Come on, buddy. He's sticking with Bandek. Why? (laughs) Chopping with that sword. Oh, baby. Look at these guys. No. Big chop into into the shoulder blade of Bandek and pulls the blade out. (laughs) Mad cackle from this skeletal fighter. Bandek, you're a... Uh, seeing that Kilvar just took a big hit, just ignoring the fact that I just took a damage, I am going to shift back in front of him, posturing it in a defensive stance, and I'm going to raise my shield in defiance one more time, and I'll be like, Undead, be gone! And I'm going to try to cast on Turn Undead again. Ooh, okay. Oh, this has to work. Roll to cast it. 17. Oh, I got to beat a 17. Okay. So you the- can't do it. You can't do it. So the scout, I gotta roll charisma, right? The scout up front. Fate. He is destroyed because he failed it by 10. Oh! And is there certain levels? Uh, it's if it's a, equal or it, lower to our level. We are level 3. If it's not a level 3 monster, it's destroyed. They are level 2, so. He's destroyed. Okay. Very nice. This guy up so here. <laughs> just crumbles the fighter in front of you (gasps) (laughs) crumbles well i was having fun with this fight (laughs) the mage okay oh come on three for three Are you kidding me? He's buffed up. Holy hand grenade goes off. Yes. Oh, man. Okay. You can describe what you do to do your turn on dead here and totally end the fight. I posture myself between uh, Kilvar and uh, the, the three skeletal entities, and I raise my shield and, like, as I hoist my shield up, you just see like three rays of light go through and pierce the three uh, three skeletons as they just crumble into dust and just their equipment hits the ground. Nice. Very nice. Well done. Um, okay. Well, we are out of that combat as they crumble to the ground. Now, they are three level two creatures. You can go ahead. What you were gonna say? I was just gonna. I, I, I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna look to kill her. And I said, hey, "Brother, do you request aid?" After I seen him take the big hit, Kilver's gonna say, "No," and walk away. <laughs> okay. <Down here. laughs> level three heroes, level two monsters, and you fought three of them. Oh, no luck. Now that you're level three and you fought three level two monsters, it's not challenging enough to give you any luck. <laughs> like so, no, I, was, I, I don't care. We didn't get any luck. Like that, that was turn on dead that, was amazing. Oh, was that amazing. was a super cinematic kill too. I love that. 
Yeah, that was good. That was good. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll go with the top of the round. Um, all right. You still got the room here. There's terracotta jars. There's three dead skeletal bodies. There's a door over here. A lot of blood stains on the floor. Uh, do we want to take a look at the jars? I mean, we haven't had much luck when it comes to exploring uh, jars, but I guess you're probably sure. My... Uh, they're bowls. Terracotta bowls. Oh, terracotta bowls. I thought you said jars. Okay. I'm just going to take my action to heal myself. Yep. Go for it. Is there anything in the bowls that we can see? Well, you got to go up and look oh. into them. I got, uh, my heal's gone. Oh, uh, here, I'm going to give you a lock. Reroll it. Okay. I'll pat you on the shoulder. Singing <laughs> pot. Just... Seven. What, what? What the what hell? What happened? Oh, I, oh you, we both tried to add at the same time. You, can, <laughs> oh. you you fix yourself up. I didn't know you could do that. You go ahead, put yourself where you need to be. Uh, <laughs> I'm back to me. All right, so that's his action. What's the other actions for you guys? Uh, I'm going to go take a look at this bowl. Is there anything in it? Okay. So, the bowls. It is stamped with a seal that shows a warrior kneeling in black rain, arms and mouth open to the sky. But the bowl is uh, empty. So what did you say? You said it was a knight. Was it? It is a warrior. It? it is a warrior kneeling in black rain, arms and mouth open to the sky. Okay. Uh, let's see what's in. Uh, all, uh, Step over the skeleton. What's in this bowl? You notice it is the same. Exact same image, nothing in the bowl? Correct, yep. Yeah. This bowl. <laughs> same. Hmm. And Kilvar, you notice the same thing down south there. Yeah. That these sort of relay that. All bowls look seem identical. Um, with the same carvings on all of them. Um all kinds of blood stains on the floor, three skeletons at a door, and otherwise that is all that seems to be. So I'm searching there. the. We're gonna search the adventuring party that had book bags when they came in. Be right back. It was the scout who had a backpack with rope and you know torches and stuff probably in there. Who knows? Well, okay. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm searching. That's, that's what I'm doing. Looting skeletons. All right. Sounds good. So, uh, well, so you're gonna search. You search the skeletal. Which one for you searching first? Uh, the one to my left. Okay, the fighter. On a one, there's loot on him. Oh, <laughs> he got loot. Uh, okay. So, where the hell would I put that sheet? I think it is here. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> On the fighter, other than the equipment that I mentioned, if you want to take any of that generic old equipment of like chain mail and a sword and a bow. No. Um, I'm going to top up arrows, but yeah. Okay. So it takes uh, your action to search him, um, and but that's what you find. A bundle of five red dragon scales, which I will drag to your sheet if you have space. Oh, you don't. So. I don't at the moment, no. I, uh, you can throw it on mine if you want. Like, I've got space. Okay, that's fine. I'll drag it over to you. But, yeah, just a bundle of them. For whatever reason, that's the only other thing of note that this adventurer had on them. Um, so, who else still had actions or whatever? <clears throat> I did not. Or... No, I didn't actually use an action. Uh, so I'll search one of the other skeletons. I'll search the one to the north of... Uh, Okay. On a one, of course, it has something. Oh. Yeah, what's that? <laughs> oh my god. Oh. <laughs> okay. It has <clears throat> an azure flesh orb made of turquoise tinted glass. Well, maybe, depending on what my image looks like. Hold on. <laughs> an azure flesh orb? Uh, yeah, give me one sec. Alright. <clears throat> when you pick it up, there you go. It is essentially a magic wand. It works like a wand, so you need to be a classic and use a wand. 
But which, yeah, and yeah, you, alter and you, cell. Yeah, you can magically change your physical form, gaining one feature that modifies your existing anatomy. For example, you can grow gills or bear claws. Uh, oh. You can't grow wings or limbs, extra limbs. But it's like, that's pretty cool. It's like something. Small. No, no one in our party can use it, but it's great to sort of put into like the guild uh, storage. Oh, it's worth one XP. Oh, get that XP. Will you, anything you want to do for your action? I'm just moving up there. Up there? Okay. Sure. Top of 73. What do you guys want to do? Search the mage skeleton. You going you gonna to step up and look? Yes. Okay. <laughs> on, a, on a one. Oh. Nope. Had nothing of note other than its staff that it had. There's a you hallway that goes up. Do you want to go there or do you want to check the other door? Let's see where the skeletons came from. Let's follow through with that. We'll come back here after. Oh, oh and oh, what's what's down that hallway? I guess we can see. Oh, it turns so it turns to the left and also goes up and to the right. So. What do we want to explore first? Left or go up and go right? Um, I will get you to pause for a quick second. It says you are where you are. This is a hall that is very tall, like 15 feet high. And um, along the wall to your right, of right of Rothgar and Bandek, the eastern wall is broken and marked with a pair of deep holes. Like, how big are the holes? Oh, I guess the circumference of, like, I don't know, a baseball size? Mm. Is it something to sort of, like, shoot through? A or little what? bit bigger, uh, more like a softball size. <laughs> Maybe horns from a bull. <laughs> how many holes? Two. Two? Yeah. <laughs> and they're separated, you know, a couple feet apart. Who wants to bet if we were to go down that hallway to the left that we're going to find a bull statue? Uh, so let's just scratch it out. So your let's options see. are go to the left double hallway or head up north? <clears throat> I don't know how much movement you, you know got. No, there's a bull to the left. You know what? Let's go north. Oh, uh, that was a move in there. And you know there's a bull there. What are we saying here? Oh, making assumptions. Okay, I'm making. You're going to want to stop here. Once, okay, but the rest of you guys can move in the room if you want, so you can see what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. So this room, from what you can see from your point of view, it's quite the room. All right. It is supported by. Uh, four pairs of pillars. They're vibrant jewelry tone surfaces crowned with black marble, creating an atmosphere of mystique. In the center of a chamber, a purpley spindly edder cap creature lies lifeless. Its presence very unsettling. Um, and from here you can look at that edder, dead edder cap and you can see that its body has scorched fur and its mouth and chest is matted with salt rime and there are claw marks around its eyes. Both yeah. these first set of pillars are red. These are blue. Oh, these are green. Marble. And these are purple. Yeah, they're like black with like other like... Uh, oh, with like the, so the jewels on them are these colors, I'm guessing. Yeah. Correct. So um, there's black marble uh, pillars, but the vibrant jewel tones are red, blue, green, and purple. Oh, okay. Red, blue, green, and purple. Okay. Um, I'll use my action to look around to see if there's like any like traps that we can sort of tell at this point. Is that like a wisdom? That's wisdom. Yeah. If you're just looking. That's what uh, I use my action thirty foot for. thing. Yeah. What's everybody else's actions going to be? 
I'm gonna See take you it. my five foot or my ten foot pole. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Which you had stored where? <laughs> it was on my back. Yeah, <laughs> sideways on his back. Just crazy. This is a job for the pole. All right. Well, with that wisdom you check. Take a, full ass, you take a full ass action to get it out. I don't care. No, no, it's <laughs> fine. You can whip it out. Uh, with that wisdom, obviously nothing additional stands out. Um, really, other than the fact that there's like. The yeah, just only what I described. That's pretty much it. Nothing else of note but a wisdom check like that. Uh, I I want to poke the edder cap with the stick. You cannot because your stick can reach this far, and he's fifteen. Well, can I take a, He's fifteen. Can I take a step and do it? Yep, yeah, you can step over there. Okay, as soon as you step over there, as <laughs> soon as you cross that first set of pillars. Someone's got to do it. Ban Dude, this is what you bought the pole for, man. Bandek, anything flammable on you ignites. Uh, and you suffer I don't care. three uh, I, points I don't of damage. Carry, I don't carry flame because the light guides me. So, uh, a wooden ten-foot pole is flammable. It ignites okay, on so fire. I have a... So now I just have a cooler stick, is so what you're saying. Let's let me look at your inventory. Oh, my rope probably's got No shield will be fine. It's I, I... long spears. Uh so you don't have that. See I wouldn't call a ten foot full flammable. Like flammable wood's more like brittle wood. This is like saying all of his clothes are flammable. Like I I don't know if that would be the case. Yes, okay. his clothes is flammable. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, it's like being ignited on fire. So, like, you just got basically as if he like, jumped into a bonfire, uh, and he's standing in a bonfire is what it's supposed to like represent. So, anything that can light on fire is supposed to like start to light on fire. Um, so, I'm going to say, let's see. <clears throat> I'm I'm going to say your pole is going to probably take more than one round to burn. I'm going to say your rope is probably burnt to a crisp. I'm gonna just delete. Bought, just bought that rope. <laughs> delete your precious rope. You're practically naked uh, uh, underneath, but you got a lot of armor on. It's covering everything. But like anything that was just regular clothing would be burnt off. Um, and it's going to. I'm gonna assume your backpack is probably more of a tougher leather, like a tougher material. It would take more than one round. Uh, other than that, I'm gonna say right now your pole is half damaged with fire, and your backpack is half damaged with fire. Um, so if you stay in here much longer, then those items are going to get destroyed. Um, but, and you took a d4 damage. However, you still have your pole and your action or movement. <laughs> as you, uh, as you I, lit up in flame. I would like to, uh, just for no reason at all, I would like to step backwards. And just go back over here. Okay, and when you do the... Uh, the the jewels on the pillar like they br briefly lit up when they ignite at you and then they just go away again when you step back like are, are these like pillars like decked out in these jewels or they're like they're, they're just loosely decorated in random spots okay and they're like built um, into the black marble it doesn't look like anything you can retrieve or steal but but they're see if there's something that we can use to deactivate them or yeah Um, but uh, I'll use my turn to sort of look around. So if anyone else wants to try and like use their turn for anything, so we got to the other two wood actions: Kilvar and Luther. Is there anything you'd like to do? Is there yeah. anything else standing out in this room? From what? Like uh, just kind of searching for anything that seems not like uh, natural, like it would have been added. Okay, roll a wisdom. Roll better than me, please. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, nothing out of the ordinary that you can see. So basically, what I will tell you with that kind of perception check is the Edder Cap, now it makes sense why it has scorched fur. But now you also see it has a mouth and chest matted with salt rime, which 
you you know you can make your own assumption and claw marks around the eyes you're not sure what that's about so you kind of focus in on that a bit uh the rune th these pillars clearly can be activated the moment you walk past them as if you already didn't figure that out and um nothing else of note no secret doors no trails no nothing else out of place really yes something like this setup is clearly protecting something so we got to try and find a way through here um kilvar mm. i just stepped down and i'm taking a look over him i'm going to take out a taking out a ration and i'm throwing the ration as far as i can down the hallway okay i'm gonna say you can throw it down into this squadron down here yep um oh. Ration probably to 30 feet. Um, you can probably throw farther than 30 feet, eh? Probably. Maybe. 30 by 40. You can throw something at least 40 feet. Okay, you can throw it all the way to the darkness. So, as but here's the thing as you throw it, it ignites on fire. And would there be anything left? Uh, there would be. It'd be warm meat now. There, there'll be a. So, it quickly gets charred. And if, you know, if it took a D4 damage to a ration, it's probably destroyed. Uh, <laughs> but um, I will say that a little bit, whatever roll, the bone. Roll the D4. What? Roll the D four. Why? Because if it rolls like a one, it's may, it might make it. If it rolls a four, it's gone. <laughs> I doubt a ration has more than one hit point, but still. That's what I mean. So just roll the D four. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, they got obliterated as soon as you throw it. Whatever that dried potato and bread and everything else that you had in that ration just got obliterated. It with fire. Okay. Sorry, sorry, yeah. I'm not going to go in rounds. We can be out of combat now. I don't care. Uh, we're out of crawling order just to try to figure this out. I, I would like to try to throw something next. Sure. I have an uh, I have a grappling hook I can throw. With What's no, it attached with, to? With no rope with the charter. No, I, I got no rope. I'm gonna flip I'm gonna I'm gonna put it the hook on the end of my flaming pole and whip it across the room. Are you gonna throw the wooden pole with the grappling hook? No, I'm gonna like I'm gonna put it on the end of the the pole and I'm gonna like flick it. Oh, you're just gonna I... catapult, like flick the actual yeah. grappling yeah. hook as far as you can. Yeah. All right, so the grappling hook would fly through and it, it ignites on fire, which wouldn't really do much. Quick D4 damage to a grappling hook, probably not too much. Just char it a bit. It goes past the second pillar, and it. Well, you're doing this fast. Uh... All of you roll wisdom for your perception to see if you can perceive what is happening to it. Yeah, because one thing I just wanted to ask, like, when the things are igniting, it's just sort of igniting on its own. It's not like flames are shooting out of the pillar or jewels or anything, No, right? it's like whatever object is spontaneously combusting. Like, it's okay. not like a flame blast. That's what I thought anything. based off your description. Okay, I see nothing. Uh, my size, Kilver. Uh, Kilver is one step away from throwing himself off a cliff. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm going to say that both Luther and Bandek, you noticed as it passed by the second one, um, <clears throat> the flame, the scorching and the flames that were kind of on uh, the grappling hook, it just suddenly like, it, it's like, it's almost like it got sprayed with water and kind of like singed it, a bit of steam came off it really quick and then it continued on further south. In which case, uh, you nothing, and then it just goes off into the darkness. Okay, I, I wanted to like study this pillar to see if there's like any way to sort of deactivate, like is there like a button or something like that, so we can sort of pass through. Intellect, as you investigate into this, um, I have a minus one, <laughs> seven. <laughs> nothing on this pillar looks like, from what you can like, see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm patting the pillar down, not finding anything. Exactly. Okay, we're not in turn order, so any ideas you guys come up with, feel free to shout them out. I'm thinking. Yeah, no problem. I'm going to shoot an arrow. <laughs> okay. I want to see if the arrow is faster than the activation of these things. It is not. So the arrow takes one damage. And, has to be a way to deactivate it. <clears throat> and then it shoots down past there and it kind of like sizzles for a second and just shoots off into the darkness. And you hear it hit. Um, did you shoot straight down? Yes. Um, then you hear it 
not too much further than this, than what you can see. You hear it hit a stone wall. So, a hey, question. These are the red color pillars right here, right? Yep. What color were these? Blue. 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 Wow. Uh, how many gems are on this pillar? Oh, uh... I don't know. <laughs> As a gem, oh, I don't know. Uh, it just says, uh, the, or... It's just a j vibrant jewel tone. Um, yeah, I know you said we couldn't get them now. It's yeah, like it's just like a lot of it built into it. Yeah, it's like worked into the marble. It's like just like oh. uh, got like a jewel, like it just little flickers, like almost like sparkled or bedazzled all over the place. Nothing you can pry. It doesn't look like anything you can push on or interact with, as far as you can tell. Can I just can I strike it and see if I can break them? I was just gonna yep. say, can we just like attack the pillars and just see if we yep. can knock right. them down? Swing. That's an old play. Bandic, swing at it. <laughs> what weapon do you use it again? Uh, Longsword. <clears throat> All right. Um, you chop your sword and it hits and ding! doesn't seem to do any damage. We have no bludgeoning weapons, so <laughs> need a sledgehammer. Okay, so like my checks have been shit in this room, so I'm not really getting anything from looking around the room or looking at these pillars. Nope. Uh, I'm gonna try. Also, uh, the ranger did a pretty good at wisdom check, and he didn't spot anything at the place either. There's a second door. In the room with the pots that should travel under this door. Under this room. That would make sense, man. Maybe we'll get clues, if nothing else. So let's backtrack. Or you might be able to break open a wall from the other room and come in through this. Right. We can try that. So is that a plan to put a pin in it? Yeah. Okay. Can we cool see two, the two holes that the uh, we think that the bull might have made coming through the other side, maybe closer to this area? No, you do not see it. It did not protrude through the whole wall. There's, you figure there's like the width of this hallway, which, so it's a five feet of stone there, so they did not go all the way through. Um, I was going to say, um, well, it is 12 my time. Do we want to call yeah. it there? All right, everybody, the next episode will be here on the screen if it's available at this time. Otherwise, if you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button, comment down below, let me know your thoughts on the adventure, share this with your friends if you want to help this channel grow, and as always, stay in the light.